Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Hillsborough County Board of County Commissioners Land Use Meeting. Will everyone please rise with the Pledge of Allegiance and invocation given by our Chaplain, Commissioner Stacy White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to, and to the republic which stands one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will guide this board, our staff and stakeholders as we make important decisions on a finite resource. Uh, as always, Lord, I pray for uh, all of our first responders and members of our armed forces that you'll keep them safe and guide them, comfort them each and every day. I ask for all of these blessings in your heavenly name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Commissioner White. Yes, Roll sir. call, please. Roll call. Good morning, Miller. Here. Hagen. Here. Kemp. Here. Merman. Here. Overman. Here. Smith. Here. White. Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Thank you. Mr. Moretta, good morning. Changes to the agenda. Good morning, Commissioners. We do have some changes to the agenda, and I'll read those into the record. Starting on agenda page six, item E1, application 20-0332. The applicant is requesting the application be continued to the October 13th board meeting starting at 9 a.m. Moving to agenda page nine, item E12. This application is out of order. It is being continued to October 13th board meeting starting at 9 a.m. On agenda page 11, item G1. The applicant has withdrawn their request for oral argument and the item will be heard on the consent agenda. Then moving to item M1, this is an off the agenda item. This will entail a presentation by the Hillsborough County Public Schools on the tentative five-year work plan. Commissioners, that concludes the agenda. Yes. Move the changes. Motion by Commissioner Merman. Second. Second by Commissioner White to approve the changes to the agenda. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Thank you. May I have a motion to <clears throat> approve the consent Seven. Agenda? So seven. seven. Commissioner Merman. Second. Second by Commissioner Overman. Oh, sorry, sorry, Commissioner Kemp. To approve the changes to the agenda. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Anyone having a B item, your items have been approved. Anyone having a B item, your item has been approved. Anyone wishing to testify before the board this morning, please stand, raise your right hand, and let the clerk swear you in. <clears throat> Good morning. Do you swear or affirm that the, that the uh, testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Mr. Moretta. Thank you, Commissioners. That brings us to item E2 on the agenda of personal appearance 20 0561, located at 8002 Anderson Road. Uh, the parcel is approximately a little bit over half an acre. It's located in the LI light industrial plan category. It's a plan development. The existing use entitlement is for manufacturing uses. It's a little bit over 28,000 square feet. Um, commissioners, this is a change to uh, request a, a slight increase in the impervious surface from 75 to 85%, a reduction in front setback from 20 to 30 feet, and also uh, to request that the parking be in accord with the land development code requirements. It doesn't entail any additional entitlements. What it entails is uh, opening up the area where the building actually can be allocated on the site. Staff is recommending approval subject to conditions. Is the applicant here? Is the applicant present? Mr. Moretta, is the applicant there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay.
Can't hear the applicant. Now? Okay. Good morning, Commission. My name is Richard Claybrook. I'm with Claybrook Engineering, and I'm here as a uh, to uh, support the application. We have uh, negotiated uh, an agreement with uh, the planning and zoning and uh, we are in agreement. Um, so I'm here to answer any questions the commissioners may have. Thank you, thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak as a proponent? Anyone wishing to speak as a proponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Applicant waves rebuttal time. Thank you very much. What's your pleasure? Move approval. Motion by Commissioner Merman. Second. Second by Commissioner Kemp to approve item E2. See the further discussion. Please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Thank you. Mr. Moretta. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, commissioners. This brings us to item E3. This is a personal appearance 20 0641. It's a, an amendment, proposed amendment to a plan development approved in 2005. It was recently approved for a major modification for an affordable housing development detailing. 120 multifamily units. The applicant is proposing to change the clusters that are allowed for the density or, or the dwelling clusters from 14 to 16. Um, they're also requesting to amend access related to a lemons. Well, the primary access for the site is off of Lemon Street. And they're act, asking to uh, eliminate a requirement to make a road improvement for a connection on Gidding Street. The primary issue that uh, staff has dealt with in the evaluation of this is we felt the multifamily cluster was a, a, a change that was almost inconsequential to the plan, but the, the main thrust of our evaluation was around the access and the cross access evaluation. And I'm gonna let Brian Grady walk through the various steps of that evaluation and our conclusion. Staff is recommending approval in part subject to conditions in that condition that is uh, being contested by the applicant is related to the access improvement on Giddings. Good morning, Commissioners. Brian Grady, Hillsborough County Development Services Division. Uh, regarding the access to the site, uh, this is the aerial of the site. Uh, it's primary access to him and Ambient on the eastern boundary. Existing uh, staff, it's part of a, evaluating this, evaluated. Staff evaluated as part of the original uh, most recent zoning modification as part of this modification uh, opportunities for connectivity for this project. As noted, its primary access is on Lemons Avenue. You'll note along the western boundary, there's two undeveloped uh, vacant right of ways, Giddens, Giddens, uh, which street is right here, and then another undeveloped uh, right of way down here. Uh, there is existence of wetlands along this boundary, although not high quality, it does create some issues. And so from staff's perspective, uh, we did not have an objection with uh, not making a connection here as long as the Gideon's Roads connection was provided. So here's a little bit more detail on those connections. I uh, will note to the south is a railroad track. As noted to the southern boundary, there's a railroad track uh, there's the issue, uh, this, this southern uh, to Mango Street right away. There's existing wetlands there, so there's some challenges with making the connection there. And then the, the uh, preferred secondary access would again be to, to Gideon Street. Uh, we have proposed a condition, because the applicant will we'll hear from the applicant regarding uh, issues regarding uh, that Gideon Street right away. Uh, we have that there's potential for uh, the adjacent property owner to requesting a vacation of that right away. Our, our conditional approval is we have a condition that uh, allows if, if before the project gets through site development review, uh, the Gideon Street right away is vacated, then that they would not have to make that uh, connection to that right away. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. 
I, I see no question at this time. Is the applicant available? Nurse. Nurse. For the record, I'm Michael Horner, 14502 North Dale Mabry Highway, Suite 2, Homewood, Tampa, 33618. Uh, here we go, sideways. I appreciate working with staff uh, commissioners. With me this morning is Mr. Jeremy Couch, Tampa Small Design, also Ms. Brianne Hefner. Uh, Southport Development. Southport Development was approved for a major mod in 19, excuse me, 2019 uh, for 120 units. We received the density bump up under your affordable housing development program for the infill density and the affordable housing bump up to 12 units per acre. So our intention all along was to have 120 affordable housing units. We have gone through a number of iterations, a number of reviews. We appreciate working with staff. We have no opposition. We have strong support. However, we had thought that we would be through this process by now. Uh, unfortunately, with the COVID delays, we found ourselves in a position where we have all construction plans approved, but we are pending a right-of-way vacation that will not be scheduled until sometime in November, December. Uh, Mr. Grady is correct, and the report states that we did have a condition uh, on that major mod request for a condition of approval. And that was for a connection to Giddings right of way, which is here. I wasn't aware of this. This was the plan that we filed for the PRS that we filed, gosh, I want to say back in March, commissioners. And this PRS was filed for relief because after detailed engineering and construction cost estimates, it became rather apparent quickly that this project was way too expensive under the budget and unnecessary improvements would essentially threaten the viability and opportunity to construct this affordable housing development. Our clients have worked with Cheryl Howe uh, for the past year. I've worked on this project for almost two years. This is Mango Terrace. It is fully funded. Uh, we are ready to go. Unfortunately, the Giddens right of way Currently has an encroachment of a parking lot that the church of the prior owner, not the current church ownership, but a parking lot has been partially constructed in this right of way of Giddings. We are proposing improvements to both Lemon Avenue, constructing sidewalks and remilling portions of Lemon Avenue all the way up to MLK. We also have uh, constructed and proposed as part of our uh, development plan, a sidewalk all the way across Giddings right of way all the way to the west to Broadway and then extending all the way up Broadway to MLK. So we have extensive sidewalk connectivity. I might also add commissioners. Unfortunately, we have been advised uh, recently that we are only funded for 94 of the 120 units. So this project now completely eliminates this eight unit building, four up, four down and also this eight unit building, four units up, four units down. This further complicates the funding dynamics. Our client is in a position of having to make trade-offs. If we are forced to construct the Giddings right-of-way improvements all the way across in the church property, we would be in a position that something has to give on this project. That is why we put so much emphasis on upgrading a lemon as well as extensive sidewalk improvements all the way up to MLK, North on Lemon, as well as on Broadway. The church has representatives here that they'll address and discuss with you those options and why they have filed that right-of-way vacation petition. Unfortunately, commissioners, that right-of-way vacation action will not come to you until, my guess is November, December. We have to be under construction for this project uh, by end of the year. We have all permits, Swift Mud, Hillsborough County, road construction. We just have to get this final approval to indicate this most worthy project that we've all been working so hard on. You can see that if this connection was made, we will now have a direct through traffic from Lemon all the way to Broadway. We think that introduces perhaps an unsafe condition where we'll have parks and playgrounds and children playing and walking throughout this community. We have extensive sidewalk connectivity throughout this internal development, as well as I mentioned, all along Lemon, all across this Giddens right away to be vacated, and again, all the way up north 
to MLK. So what we had hoped would be 120 unit affordable housing development, we now find ourselves at 104. Uh, the one condition that allows the eight up, eight down is critical because those construction costs for the smaller buildings were very high. So now we're doing a few larger buildings. Ironically, the smaller buildings, the 16 unit or the eight unit buildings, those are the ones that leave here and here that no longer exist. So those will be removed from the plan. So this budget has been impacted substantially. If we implement and agree to condition 11 commissioners, uh, it's going to probably delay this project, if not prohibit the project from moving forward. It pains me to say that. I have representatives from Southport who will speak to this project funding levels and their opinion on moving forward. We have worked so hard with staff. We appreciate your approval. Well, this board encourages and supports affordable housing. I'm just trying to find a way to get this project across the finish line. I'm going to have Jeremy Couch describe some off-site condition improvements first, and then Ms. Brianne Hefner from Southport Development that will follow. Thank you, Commissioners. Clerk, how much more time do we have for the applicant? Mr. Chairman, I'm showing just under nine minutes. Okay. The civil 17937 hunting bus are pretty quick. Um, so the uh, the unapproved right of way in question um, is a real disaster to construct, to put it lightly. Um, this is the area you can see on the right hand side of the telephone pole. This is the right of way. It's a low lying land. Immediately adjacent to it is a wetland area. Uh, the drainage runs through this right of way and into the wetlands. There is no room anywhere in this right of way to construct retention and it's actually lower than our property. So what we're gonna to have to do is build walls on both sides of this right of way, elevate the road in the air so that way the drainage can work and drain back to the site. Um, areas where we had parks and green space planned, we're going to have to rededicate that for uh, retention. Um, I mean, conservatively, I think the estimate of cost of this small piece of right of way is between four and $600,000. So it's gonna be a road to nowhere. It's gonna to connect to our parking lot, go through the parking lot and go to Lemon Avenue. My concern is that people in the area are gonna use this as a cut through to go to Wawa's and they're gonna flip through and they're gonna haul tail through this parking lot. It's only hundred units. There's gonna be kids out there playing and all of a sudden it's, it's, a, it's a public right of way through a parking lot back to a public right of way. I mean, the potential is just, it's really bad. And I think the people that are gonna lose are the apartment complex. I mean, they have an opportunity to have a small community at the uh, at the end of a road, and it's a safe community. Um, the church, which we'll talk, has huge plans to expand in this area and do a lot of outreach. But if we build this road and we have these walls, their two properties are gonna be bifurcated. It just, it looks good on paper, but I don't know that it makes sense in the real world. You can see the trees we're gonna have to wipe out. I mean, it's an absolute disaster. Um, and I'm gonna let Brianne speak, thank you. Good morning, can everyone hear me? Brianne Hefner, uh, 5403 West Grave Street, Tampa, Florida, 33609. I made notes, so this will either go very, very well or very poorly, so I apologize in advance. Uh, a lot of friendly faces in the room and on the screen, and it's nice to see all everyone. Commissioners, thanks for having us and allowing us to speak. I wanna give a big shout out to the Hillsborough County staff, especially her, uh, Cheryl Howell for helping us with our affordable housing project. I'm gonna say affordable housing a lot, and I apologize as well, but this Mango Terrace is an affordable housing complex, as, it, as my previous team members have said, 104 units. Southport is a Tampa-based affordable housing developer. Uh, this is our backyard and we love doing business in Hillsborough County. Statewide, we have 77 properties, over 9,500 units. Hillsborough County, nine properties, just over 1,000 units. This would add to our portfolio here in our local jurisdiction and we're pretty excited about that. As the gentlemen before me have spoke, we have a finite resource. We were one of the lucky ones that won sale 
ELI 4% tax credits from Florida Housing Finance Corporation. In that, you have a very fixed finance budget. As mentioned as well, we were anticipating building 120 units because we got the affordable housing boost. Unfortunately, construction costs have gone up about 25% over the last couple of years, which hurts the wallet and affects the budget. Having to spend 400 to $600,000 on this see-through road or this cut-through road would be detrimental to the property. Also, as mentioned, um, this is a family development. There will be a lot of children who will be living in the neighborhoods in the ones, twos, and three bedroom units. Our fear is folks using MLK to cut through on Gideon's and run through the parking lot of our development. Even with speed bumps or speed humps, it will still include extra traffic that we don't need. Also, we're on a time crunch. This darn COVID has messed us up. So we need to be closed by the end of this year. Unfortunately, with the conditions number 11 and 12, that means we would have to wait for the road vacation from the church. Uh, unfortunately, that not occurring until November or December means we cannot even turn in our building permits. Again, you have to have site plan approval in order to turn in building permits. And that's what we're most terrified of right now. I don't need to go into the stats of how important affordable housing is in Hillsborough County. I have plenty of them written down. Um, I'll save those for another day since I know I'm running out of time. But I do wanna say that affordable housing is a necessity in Hillsborough County. And to quote Commissioner Kimberly Overman, who happened to be at my last project's opening, uh, Laburnum Gardens, 81 units in Valrico, in order to build a strong economy, people need a place to lay their heads at night so they can take care of their families and take care of their lives. That foundation is key to a successful community and economy. So we are pleading, begging, groveling uh, for the approval of our uh, PR, PRS with uh, removing conditions number 11 and 12. How much time is left, please? Two minutes, 57 seconds. All right, commissioners, I'll just say this and then I'll wait for a rebuttal opportunity. I know some supporters are here in the church representatives. Even the staff report states and acknowledges that the 120 units applied for is under the trip generation PM peak hour threshold levels that require secondary access for planned unit development of this nature. So not only did it not trigger that requirement in the major mod process, now we have reduced from 120 to 104 units. We refiled those trip generation standard sheets back to the staff for ITE review. That impact is now further diminished based upon the reduction of trips from 120 to 104 units. So the necessity of that roadway connection, which we just referenced, uh, is further I think uh, not necessary uh, based upon those trip generation rates and the safety concerns and no question the cost constraints. I'll yield my time uh, to the supporters and then be happy to have any questions uh, every rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> this is a public hearing. Uh, I have one person that was signed up, I think as a proponent, uh, David Wright. Uh, good morning, David. commissioners. Uh, this is David Wright, president of PSP Companies. Our address is PO Box 1016, Tampa, Florida, 33601, and I have been sworn in. Uh, we are in support of this PRS and actually also in support of the church not having to connect to Gidding Street. I'm in the process of completing the um, right-of-way vacation application on behalf of the church, and we're just working to get the signatures. And as soon as we have the signatures from the adjacent property owners, we plan to submit that application to request the vacation of Gidding Street and the street to the north. Um, the purpose for the vacation is that, as was previously mentioned, the church uh, plans to follow through with a unified site plan so that they can uh, create a facility to have more outreach to the community there. And I'd like to point out again, as it was previously stated, it's unimproved right away. It's never developed as it was originally intended years ago. Also, as was previously mentioned, affordable housing is much needed in this county. 
And so we would request your approval of this PRS uh, with the conditions requested by the applicant. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else wishing to speak as a proponent? Anyone else wishing to speak as a proponent? Is there anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Applicant, you waive your time, the rebuttal time. If I could just make one comment, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The request again was to allow for. Mr. Swan, what are you rebutting? Nobody talking. Just wanted to state uh, that Mr. Tom Eltham of Bay Life Church was supposed to be on this morning. I think he's having difficulty accessing. Uh, Bay Life Church is our neighbor. Uh, they have a number of paper streets throughout their project, their property. They do not wish to have this through traffic either. Uh, however, they are willing to have cross access connection in terms of pedestrian, and they have encouraged and allowed us to have that five foot wide sidewalk all the way through that South property. When that right of way petition comes to this board, uh, we would certainly reserve an easement for that sidewalk so that connectivity can remain. Commissioners, I would only ask to implement our request, uh, if possible, that condition 10 be amended so that it only states applicants shall be allowed one access to Lemon Avenue. Condition 11 would be removed in its entirety. And condition 12, the initial sentence up to the applicant will be required, be struck, as well as the last sentence beginning with if the getting street right of way is not vacated. With those changes, and we are humbly asking you for this request because I've worked so hard on this as the team members have, this is a good project. The church is offering a number of social service programs that dovetail perfectly to this affordable housing community. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll close the public hearing. Commissioner Overman, you recognize. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate it. And I uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, it's always interesting being quoted in somebody else's presentation, but uh, I do have a passion, obviously, for affordable housing, and these units are needed. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, while I have been a strong proponent of having cross access and additional access, in this particular case, uh, it does appear as though putting in the access on Giddens is, as a roadway uh, may not necessarily achieve the project or should possibly cause some difficulty in the project. Um, the last sentences that were mentioned by Mr. Horner made me wonder uh, regarding item uh, 12, regarding the substandard lane on Lemon Avenue. Previously in the document, it made references of improving Lemon Avenue at Lemon Avenue and uh, because it is substandard and it is the access to water wastewater. Uh, is is that access going to be improved for the length of the property to Broadway is one of the questions I, I'd like to get an answer to. Otherwise, I'm, I'm happy with the request to strike um, item 11. Commissioner Oberman, you asked that question too. To Jeremy Couch on that response. Uh, Mr. Thank Horner you. would probably, okay. well, they can make the call. Commissioner Overman, thank you. Um, this is a, a picture of the Lemon Avenue right of way. Um, if you can see uh, where the vehicle is, um, that's actually where the Wawa's um, improvement ended. So it is our proposal. Uh, we've communicated with Public Works, DESS. We've worked through a fix. We're going to rip up the sidewalk, put a new sidewalk in. We're going to resurface the entire road all the way north to MLK. Uh, we're going to stop at the improvement um, near the light where the Wawa's is because it's it's brand new asphalt. Um, it's only you know less than less than maybe a year year and a half old, so there's probably no reason really to rip that brand new asphalt up. But we're going to tie into that. So this whole corridor, um, all the way to the southern terminus, 
is gonna look like a brand new road. It's gonna have good, safe uh, pedestrian access. Um, and that's what we've worked with Mike Williams and Ben Neasley of DESS with. Thank you. So what I'm hearing is there will be sidewalks on both sides of the road and new pavement all the way the length of the property? On the east side of the road, Commissioner, um, it's hard to tell in this picture, um, but it, the sidewalk terminates at about here. Um, but between those two uh, roadwork signs, there is a significant drop off in the right of way there. Um, there's actually um, bollards protecting vehicles or like a, like a really big fence post protecting vehicles from falling off in that area. So the sidewalk, that's why the sidewalk ends there. On our west side um, is going to be the main thoroughfare from our folks walking to um, the north. We'll have immediately off the picture on the bottom right, there's an, there's an intersection for a subdivision, I think about a 50 unit subdivision. We're going to have connectivity across the street there. And then on the west side, we're going to rebuild the sidewalk all the way north. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioner Smith, you recognize. Thank you. Um, um, of course, we all want affordable housing project. Um, me uh, and connectivity has been a big goal of this board and our county uh, because everyone complains about traffic congestion. And there is no magic silver bullet to traffic congestion. The, the answer is going to have to come in pieces. And one of the pieces is co connecting the, get, the grid and giving people options um, on our, uh, to our traffic congestion. And um, that is the way that good planning will help to solve our traffic congestion. So everybody wants to connect the grid. Everybody wants those options when they're driving around. Everybody agrees that's the that's part of the solution, but nobody wants the grid connected through their own neighborhood or their own project. And um, as I hear the biggest argument here, again, as always, is the applicant doesn't want cut through traffic. And as always, um, they talk about the children, and in uh, that's just always what we hear. That's what is always presented. They don't want truck uh, cut through traffic. I think our staff has worked really hard um, with the applicant to make this project work and to find ways for connectivity. They've they've agreed that in this corner there's wetlands, and in this corner there's other challenges. So they're only requesting um, two connection points um, and, and the applicant wants that limited to one. So they're effectively a dead end cul-de-sac with no cut through traffic and no connectivity. Um, I, I think the staff has worked really hard to add condition 12 that says um, if the uh, right of way is vacated, then condition 11 will be void. So um, I, I think they've been over backwards. Our staff has to make um, our goal of connectivity work as much as possible with our goal of affordable housing. And with that, I'll move the item with the staff conditions. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Kemp. Commissioner Oven, you recognize. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I am interested in actually having those conditions met, but I'm not to the extent that the affordable housing financing doesn't work and the project fails before the end of the year. Um, is there anyone that can attest to the financing staff that would verify that, in fact, the project would not be sustained should we make these conditions stand? So I do, I do hear that the applicant has considered putting in, you know, the sidewalk access to Broadway so there's a walkable or a bikeable method to get out of the property in lieu of a full road. 
Um, but I also know how critically important it is when we are 54,000 units short of affordable housing in Hillsborough County. Um, so there, and it isn't a huge road and it's not a huge project, but I would like to find out if there's anyone possibly that can help us understand why the project would not be able to be completed or at least open by the end of the year should this project, should this requirement stand? Yes, of course, um, that's an excellent question. Um, and yes, the staff has worked with us a lot on this and it's been greatly appreciated and especially with the affordable housing bonuses and all that kind of um, things that we've gotten. So yes, if the biggest holdup is that you, we may not turn in our building permits without final site approval. So in condition 12, where it says, if they don't make us, if they don't, if they do get the right away, then we don't have to do it. Cool, but we won't know that until this November or December. I know that we do have building permit uh, expedition in Hillsborough County, which is wonderful. However, I have to have all permits in hand before I make close. So as you can imagine, if I don't get approval from the vacation until October, November, December, uh, and I can't turn in my building permits, then I am behind the eight ball, of course. It would effectively require us to request an extension from Florida Housing. Uh, Ray Dubuque, who is the current vice chair of Florida Housing Finance Corporation Board of Directors, is adamantly against giving extensions. He wants developers to do what they should do and get out of the way and get these things closed. But he does not also understand how long the process in a lot of the municipalities takes. Mm. Yes, it could be a detriment to the property um, on a timing standpoint and a, a losing of finance standpoint. Okay, Commissioner okay. Merman, you're right. Thank you. Commissioner Merman, you recognize. Um, thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Overman uh, brings up some important points. I want to ask a couple questions, one to the uh, Mr. Horner and the other to Adam Gormley. Um, <clears throat> basically, what you're asking for is to approve this project without condition 11 and 12. Is that correct? Commissioner, thank you for the question. Michael Horner for the record. We are asking for condition 10 to be amended for only the access to lemon. We are asking for the deletion entirely of condition 11 that requires the construction of Giddings Cross Street. And 12, we are asking to amend, removing the first sentence to the applicant will be required starting the condition at that point and then deleting the last sentence, if the Getting Street right-of-way is not vacated. Those are the changes we're seeking. Um, as Mr. Couch testified, this improvement would be three fifty dollars to $600,000. We'd have to start over from scratch on those construction plans. Physically, they're not sure that can be accommodated with the permits. We would have to start essentially over and come back to you my guess is in the spring, and by then it's too late. The right-of-way vacation obviously is gonna be November, December, and clearly too late to get building permits. So I might also add there, I just got your approval, and we're thankful for that of the Aldi grocery store uh, on MLK, just at the north side mm -hmm. of Lemon, south of MLK, west of uh, the Wawa. So that new sidewalk section that Mr. Couch talked about will be a direct connection right to the back door of Aldi grocery store, which is 20,000 square feet, I might add. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, can I also ask, is um, is there transit in the area? There is transit available on MLK, okay. yes. Okay, um, then to Adam Gormley. Um, Adam, so given what you've heard in all this testimony and the fact that if we approve the project the way it is in our book today, um, without the other conditions that they're proposing, that they we would, in essence, lose this project. So did you all take this into consideration 
Um, I'm sure you talked to the applicant and he relayed all this information to you. And um, why did you feel a need to continue to stick with um, the recommendations that you've made? Commissioner, we saw this and, and recognized the challenges that were associated with the project and from the uh, affordable housing standpoint and their financing uh, considerations. And we thought this was a significant enough issue that we needed to bring this, uh, get some guidance from the board on how they ultimately saw this, this connection. As Mr. Horner indicated, that it, there is a pending or being prepared vacating request while this uh, request uh, by the applicant doesn't preclude the use of this road, this this. Um, sorry. Excuse me. Who's that talking? Who is that talking? Continue, Mr. Gormley. Hmm. Sorry, sir. This is James Brewer. Um, that that's Glenn Register, one of my associates. That's that's in the room. Um, are we having an issue, Chris or Glenn? James, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, one of our laptops is experiencing technical difficulties. Okay. You should be able to continue, though. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Chairman, before we move forward, can I take this opportunity to identify two call-in users that have joined recently? <clears throat> the first call-in user is area code 813766. Can you identify yourself, please? Area code 813766. Can you identify yourself, please? I think it's Susie Vega. Okay. Uh, I have another call-in user, area code 8262. Uh, Three five two. Can you identify yourself, please? Sorry, go ahead. If I may, Susie Vega was the applicant for item E one. It has been continued to October thirteenth. So, if that's the item that she's on the line for, her item has been uh, uh, acted on for today. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and mute both of those callers since they are not muting themselves and they have disrupted the call a few times. Um, Ms. Vega, hopefully you heard that and your item has been continued. Chairman, you have the floor, sir. Okay, Mr. Gormley, continue, please. Yeah. Um, while, while not requiring the connection doesn't necessarily preclude the use of that as, as a roadway, um, it, it was an existing condition and uh, the, the impacts while, while the, plan number of units have changed. The, the actual number approved, I believe, is staying the same. Um, uh, essentially, we didn't see the need for uh, removing that connection. Uh, we did recognize that, you know, that again, that there's some financial challenges, and uh, we did structure condition 12 to include a pedestrian walkway, which I believe the applicant is still uh, committing to provide, and, and the conditions that uh, Mr. Horner read would would achieve that if the board was inclined to leave that as a pedestrian versus vehicular connection. But essentially, uh, we again we did recognize the challenges to the project and the and the costs that are associated with this. Uh, however, we we erred on the side of of maintaining the connectivity that was in the PD uh, uh, that exists based on the last board approval. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the changes he's recommending, I'm sorry, um, <clears throat> in number 10, um, if that was to a change to Lemon Street. So are you against that or for that, Adam? Well, commissioners, it's, just, it's simply a question of whether one or two access points <laughs> are sufficient for, for this. Um, if, if the board was inclined to provide for one access point to, to Lemon Avenue. Uh, uh, one, one consideration is uh, that that the uh, that access connection to Giddings doesn't preclude emergency access uh, in the event that getting uh, getting street uh, that does not get vacated. But um, um, you know, to achieve what the applicant is asking for. Yes, that, that what Mr. Horner read would achieve that. Okay, so I'm going to make a substitute motion. I think this project is critically important. 
and to lose the financing, um, I, I think that this is just gonna be you know, a case by case basis on the connectivity where I think in this case, um, you know, I just think to be fair and to help provide something that's really been an important goal for this commission, um, I'm going to make a Mr. substitute Merman, motion. Yes. Before you make your substitute motion, can I ask a question? Sure. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gormley, is there any way that your staff and the applicant could step outside and work this out and bring it back? So we won't have. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Certainly uh, willing to do that. I will say that you know, really the issue is is um, building a, a vehicular connection to Giddings Street or building uh, only a pedestrian five foot sidewalk connection. Um, if the board's in, inclined to to support the the pedestrian connection only at this time. Uh, the conditions that Mr. Horner read were clear enough that we can um, make that change. So let's let's do this. Sure, let's do this. Fix it more. I think Mr. Horner, the applicant, has has laid it out. Um, okay, Mr. Gormley. Hold on, Mr. Gormley. Well, Commissioner Merman, uh, yes. would you would you be inclined for that if I ask Commissioner Smith to withdraw? The <laughs> pedestrian only at this time. There will still be a future discussion and a future item that would come to the board about the status of Gidding Street. Uh, the, the difference would be who would construct it if, in fact, it's, it's deemed uh, necessary to maintain as a right of way in the future. Okay, Mr. Gormley, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, Commissioner Merman, uh, yes. if I ask Commissioner Smith to withdraw her motion and have staff with Mr. with the applicant step outside and try to work this out and bring it back to us later on in the meeting, Mr. Smith, Commissioner Smith, are you willing to do that? I will hear whatever they bring back, but I won't support the project without at least two access points uh, as as they already worked out with staff. So, so you're not willing to withdraw your motion? I'll withdraw my motion if, if you think that uh, another half hour will bring something different back, but I'm just stating. I understand your statement, but let's, get, let's, let's try to give them an opportunity to work this out because I do understand the mere fact is that what you're saying, this is affordable housing, something we talk about constantly, 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 and I hate to see them lose this, but you know, if they can work it out and, and we all can be satisfied with it, I think that's something we at least give them the opportunity to do. So Ms. Commissioner Smith has withdrawn her motion. So staff, I'm gonna temporarily pass E3, uh, step outside with Mr. Horner and his people and try to work something out and bring it back to us. Is that okay? Understand? Sir. I agree. Okay, all right. Mr. What, who I want to call on now? Mr. Moretta is coming right. Mr. Moretta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, commissioners. Since that item is being tabled at this point, we'll move to item E4, which is personal appearance 20 0647, located at the southwest corner of Falkenberg Road and Camden Road. Field Parkway. Uh, commissioners, this is a pretty straightforward request to modify parcel E of a planned development. That parcel right now uh, permits townhomes and the request is to convert the townhome units to multifamily. In addition to that, the applicant is essentially asking for an increase in height. This will move the maximum height up to 47 feet in three stories. Right now, the maximum height is 35 feet in two stories. I believe Mr. Brian Grady is going to walk us through the site plan evaluation that the staff went through uh, to arrive at our uh, compat compatibility evaluation. Uh, we are recommending approval with conditions and I'll turn it over to Brian to walk through uh, the spacing and is being maintained and the buffering is being maintained on the site plan um, in inclusive of the changes. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Brian Grady, Hillsborough County Development Services uh, Division. Uh, there, on this is the area of the proposed change where they're uh, going from uh, townhomes to multifamily. Uh, res with respect to uh, self decks, I would note that the height they're requesting is permitted uh, elsewhere within the project. So, the, actually, the height increase will be consistent with other multifamily areas in the project. I will note that the 
parcel to the west it's all under the same ownership so this is going to be extension of multifamily development that's, uh, permitted here on the western boundary along the southern boundary uh along the eastern boundary you'll notice there's an existing retention pond to provide setbacks along here and also additional uh, easements and, and retention along the northern boundary uh they didn't the happen along the southern boundary did increase uh did agree to a 50 foot setback and type a screening along that boundary uh, based on that and with the existing setbacks of uh, 35 feet there's 85 feet between the buildings i would note under the two to four under this requirement of two foot of setback for every one foot of structure out of 20 feet the code would require 50 feet is 54 feet of separation between the buildings so they're meeting that requirement so based on those evaluations staff did uh, find the uh, height increase appropriate and is recommending approval we'd be happy to answer any questions thank you as applicant uh here. is the applicant here yeah. good morning mr chairman commissioners good morning, mr. have you been sworn in yes sir i've been sworn mark bentley 401 east jackson street tampa 33602 um, okay so you have 15 minutes okay well, I, I won't need that, certainly, but uh, we're seeking a minor modification to allow the conversion of 24 townhome units out of a 514-unit project um, from townhomes to multifamily. The only distinction to your code between a townhome and multifamily is that so there's a platting requirement for townhomes. The townhome requirement was not imposed by the Board of County Commissioners nor staff when we, under the original rezoning, that was just voluntary. That was just a where the developer thought the project was headed. Since then, the development and the marketing scheme has changed. So what, what Brian indicated to allow um, an increase in height, we've agreed to set back the southern boundary, the building set back from 20 to 50 feet. So there's additional screening. So in any event, uh, it's become compatible. And as you saw, as you saw in the wrapped around on the east and northern boundary of the retention pond. So we'd appreciate your consideration and approval. Any questions, I'll certainly try and answer them. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is a public hearing. I don't have anyone signed up, but is there anyone anyone wishing to speak as a proponent? Anyone wishing to speak as a proponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Anyone wishing to speak? Okay. Good morning. Hello. Have Hi. you been sworn in? Yes, uh, my name is Miranda Sunquist, and I actually live in Magnolia Park West, which is the neighborhood that wraps around uh, the retention pond. And uh, none of us really knew that they were actually gonna be building back there. We thought it was gonna be staying uh, just like conservation area, and no one in my neighborhood knew until we received this letter about this meeting. So I was just coming to see what was going on. And it looks like they're trying to build a lot higher than one story. And a lot of us have our houses that back up to this pond. So they will be looking directly into our houses, it's kind of uncomfortable. Uh, so um, I do oppose building higher. Uh, other than that, yeah, I just, uh, I, I oppose the higher build because I live there and I've lived there for six years and I have. Uh, yeah, that's it. Sorry for my stumbling. This is my first time doing something like this. Okay, very good. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else wishing to speak as an opponent? Anyone else wishing to speak as an opponent? Close the public hearing. Uh, applicant, you have five minutes for rebuttal. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I would just point out that this property has been zoned for a number of years for the 24 townhomes. And Ms. Sunquist apparently lives to the east, if I'm understanding her, and there's 163 foot separation between our buildings, which is very significant, plus the retention pond. So um, that about sums it up, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, members, what's your pleasure? Move approval. Motion by Commissioner Merman. Second. 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 Second by Commissioner Overman, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, anyone wishing to, Commissioner Smith, your hands up? What's you're not using a hand indicator? Um, yeah, I've used my hand indicator. Not working. Yes. Okay, it's yeah, up. Go ahead. Anyway, um, uh -huh. I'd like to ask um, the applicant, Mr. Bentley, 
um, you say there's 168 feet. Does that include the um, retention pond or how much, how far is it to the um, residents that the citizen was concerned about? Will your buildings actually be able to see into their yards or pools or anything else they have going on? Hi, Commissioner. Um, if you look at page three of the staff report in the first paragraph, it says, quote, townhomes to the east are located approximately 143 feet from the common property line with an intervening stormwater pond. This results in a distance of approximately 163 feet between buildings because of the 20 foot setback on our property. So it's 163 feet between buildings. Anything further, Commissioner Smith? Okay, Commissioner Berman, you recognize? Uh, I'm sorry, no. I didn't mean to have my hand up. Okay, uh, seeing no further hands, we have a motion by Commissioner Merman, second by Commissioner Owen to approve item E4. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Thank you, Mr. Murata. Thank you, commissioners. This brings us to item E5, personal appearance 20-0655. This is located on the northwest corner of Sims Road, Sims Lake Drive. Commissioners, this is a mixed-use plan development. The plan development has a commercial pod, parcel A, that permits 40,000 square feet of general commercial uses. This proposal to specifically modify standards that will be applicable to an automated car wash. They entail reducing the setback for the structure from 30 to 10 feet, architectural standards. Our staff reviewed this, felt it was compatible and consistent with the intent of plan development, and we are recommending approval. Thank you. Is applicant here? Commissioners, I have, this is David Smith, 401 East Jackson Street. Have you been Apple. sworn in? I'm the Director of Zoning and Development for- have you, been, have you been sworn in, Mr. Smith? Been sworn. Okay. Proceed, you have 15 minutes, sir. You have not been sworn? He has not been sworn. Okay, please swear him in. <clears throat> Morning, sir. Do you, swear, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay, you have 15 minutes, sir. Thank you very much. I'm here uh, t today on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward request as indicated by staff. Excuse me. As indicated by staff, this is a mixed use PD. The corner parcel is the commercial portion of the property. Uh, the subject site. is the corner of Sims Lake and Sims Road. It's for an automated car wash, uh, which means it's fully automated. There's no hand washing. There's no activity um, providing additional services. Uh, this site is zoned for CG uses. It can be much more intense uses on the site than proposed. The request is to reduce the setback on Sims Lake and Sims Road in order to provide a much more efficient design and also provide for opportunity for moving the car wash tube along Sims Road with the vacuum area in the back. Uh, this operation works eight to eight. Uh, there is no activity uh, outside or any noise that would be experienced by this. Uh, the particular development plan, get you oriented, here we go, if you can see it. This is the last parcel to be developed right here on the corner. We have 400 feet to the nearest residential structures to our east. There's 300 feet to the north, and there's also an intervening utility area. Uh, there are architectural features that have been promote, proposed that will also enhance the look along Sims Drive. Uh, by approving this setback reduction, it allows us to locate the kiosk in a most efficient manner. Uh, the use could otherwise go there, but the aesthetic benefits of moving the building closer to uh, Sims Road and 
creating the circulation pattern uh, are positive for both the community and the operational aspects of the use. Um, here to answer any questions, we do have representatives of the developer uh, here if there are any questions for them. Thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone wishing to speak as a, a proponent? Anyone wishing to speak as a proponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Close the public hearing. Applicant, waive your, your rebuttal time. Move the item. Move Motion by Commissioner Move White. Second. Motion second. by Commissioner White. Second by Commissioner Overman, I believe that's who it was. Yes. Uh, seeing no uh, hands for discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Thank you. Mr. Moretta. Thank you, commissioners. That brings us to item E6, personal appearance 20 0656. This is, this is located in the general vicinity east of Brandon Boulevard, west of South Lithia Pinecrest, specifically on the inter east of the intersection of Marguerite and Mason Street. Commissioners, this is a pretty straightforward request on a parcel that's 1.93 acres. It's a request to modify the plan development site plan. It's a, a reduction from 38 multifamily units to 24 townhomes. And what's really triggering this is the additional um, of two emergency access points to the site plan. And they're also slightly organizing uh, the layout uh, and the clusters of the structures on the building. Staff has reviewed this and we found it to be consistent and compatible with the original tenant of plan development. And we are recommending approval. Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here? I've been sworn in. Have you, have you been sworn in? She has not been sworn in. No, sir. Please, please swear in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Good morning. You have 15 minutes, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Tu. My office address is 14031 North Delmary Highway, Tampa, Florida, 33618. I'm here representing the applicant, Frank DeBose. As Mr. Ramada said, the petition PRS 20-0656 is a minor modification to the approved PD 18-0532. It's to the reduce the maximum number of units from 38 multifamily units to a maximum of 24 townhome units. In addition, the applicant is proposing to widen the access point on Margaret Street and provide emergency access to facilitate fire truck movement on site. As Mr. Morata said, the project consists of seven vacant parcels totaling 1.93 acres in size. The site is located south of East Brandon uh, Boulevard and west of South Lithia Pinecrest Road at the intersection of South Margaret Street and Mason Street. The parcels are zoned PD with a future land use of R6. To elaborate briefly on the proposed three minor modifications to the PD, one is to allow three separate buildings with a total of eight townhome units at each building with 24 units in total with additional parking spaces and open space community area. Two is to widen the primary access to South Margaret Street, with will, which will allow for two lanes, which was approved by PD, uh, which was approved um, by the PD with only one lane. And third is to add two emergency access points at the north and south ends of the project for fire truck access and movement. All agencies have reviewed the project and have no objections. We want to thank staff for their review. We concur with staff's finding and agree with all conditions of approval. We respectfully request the board's approval for this petition. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone wishing to speak on item E6? As a proponent. Anyone wishing to speak on item six as a proponent? Anyone wishing to speak on item six as an opponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Seeing no uh, speakers. Uh, applicant, you waive your rebuttal time. <clears throat> applicant waives rebuttal time. Commissioner Overman, you recognize. Approval. Move approval. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Commissioner Overman, you recognize. Thank you. I was going to ask a question and do the same thing. So, um, 
Uh, there is many comments within this application regarding the Grand Oaks that appear to be at the primary entrance uh, to the project. And um, historically, what we have seen in so many developments is that, you know, the land's cleared and then houses or buildings or whatever go up and then we replant with other, other types of trees. Um, I'm hoping that this could become a grand entrance and those trees will be maintained. Um, but I wasn't sure the way the language was in the item that there was a, a strong uh, adherence to maintaining those grand oaks. Can someone clarify that for me? Otherwise, I will move to approval. Commissioners, this is uh, Joe Murata for the record. Condition number nine contains uh, uh, the protections that basically are in the land development code. Uh, to require the recognition of those grand oaks and have them labeled on the site plan and protected accordingly, uh, you know, in accordance with the land development code. And that will be done at the site engineering stage of, the, of this project if it's approved. Okay. And maybe the applicant can give me a commitment to maintaining those grand oaks. Yes, ma'am. Um, we do commit to uh, uh, remaining those uh, grand oaks. Like Mr. Morata said, during site development, we will submit a tree survey to natural develop uh, natural resources for them to review. And um, upon review, upon approval, they will uh, allow this site um, to be developed with oaks intact. Excellent. Thank you very much. So I'll move approval. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Merman. I'm sorry, Commissioner Overman. Who seconds? Second. Second by Commissioner Kemp and Merman. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Excuse me, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Thank you, Mr. Moretta. Thank you, commissioners. That brings us to item E7, personal appearance 20-0658. Commissioners, this is an amendment to a plan development located 140 feet east of the intersection of South US Highway 41 and Sims Road. Uh, the project total is approximately four and a, 14 uh, and a half acres. Commissioners, the plan development is provides for two development options. The first of which option one is a mobile home park with 84 spaces. Option two permits general commercial and multifamily is divided up in three pods. Um, the proposal is to modify the internal circulation, the configuration, the layout, including some slight adjustments and acreage to one of the pods, and also increasing the square footage by 400 square feet from 6,600 square feet to 7,000 square feet. To uh, add to the understanding and context for this, Mr. Israel Monsanto will walk you through where the changes in the site plan occur including the circulation and the increase in uh, acreage and the square footage amount. Thank you very much. We are recommending approval subject to conditions. Good morning, Israel Monsanto Development Services. I think the main changes in the um, PD plan on, the, on your left, you will see current group PD plan. It has a track A, which is an internal circulation, which divides the uh, plan development into the residential portion and the non-residential portion. The changes mainly will, it will maintain the access from Sims Road and also US Highway 41, but the difference is that the driveway, the driveway connection will happen within the non-residential portion. The interconnectivity that's approved today will be maintained, pedestrian here and full uh, vehicular connection here. Parcel two is increasing slightly the square footage for the uh, non-residential uses, and also the parcel one is reconfigured to, uh, to increase introduce the uh, track B, which is retention pond, into the parcel two. And then generally speaking, the uh, non-residential will maintain the location on the southwest corner, and the residential multifamily will be maintained on the east side. Those are basically the main changes. Thank you, sir. Is the applicant here. Good morning, Commissioners. Michael Horner, 14502 North Del Mabry Highway. Tampa 33618, represent the applicant and builder. I think staff uh, nailed it on the changes. Mr. Monsanto has been a pleasure to work with. We are essentially uh, establishing a different driveway that allows for security for these 30 multifamily units on the north side. 
increasing one of the commercial parcels by just 400 square feet. We're still maintaining all the cross access connectivity and pedestrian connectivity. Uh, we have actually extended this driveway further north. It's off this graphic for greater separation from the intersection. Uh, we have no objection, support from staff. Uh, ask for your approval today. Thank you, board members. Thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak as a proponent? Anyone wishes to speak as a proponent? Does anyone wishes to speak as an opponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Seeing none, applicant waves his time. What's your pleasure? Approval. Motion by Commissioner Merman, second by Commissioner Overman. Commissioner Overman, you recognize. Oh, sorry, I forgot to take my hand down. My apologies. Okay. Uh, seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Sorry? Yes. Thank you. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Thank you, Mr. Moretta. Thank you, commissioners. This brings us to item E8. It's a 1.54 acre parcel located at 505 South Kings Avenue. It's a modification to modify the buffering and screening shown on the site plan to default to the land development code requirements for buffering and screening. Commissioners, the land development code buffering and screening requirements are calibrated based on adjacent use. For example, if there was a commercial project next to a residential project, the commercial project would need to provide 20 foot buffering and that buffering would also include vertical screening. What the applicant is proposing in this case is that this project simply be developed in accordance with the adopted standards and land development code, which are primarily to enhance compatibility. I wanna let Brian Grady walk you through the staff, or excuse me, walk you through the site plan, to show you exactly where those changes are occurring and how we arrived at our conclusion because we are recommending approval with conditions. Good morning, again, Brian Grady, Development Services Department. Uh, this is the aerial of the subject uh, parcel that's associated with the subject application. Uh, again, as, as Mr. Moretta indicated, the, the, the land development code with respect to buffering screening for compatibility purposes does not require buffering screening uh, when there are like land uses adjacent to it. And I'll just point out on this property and evaluating this, the only area to the south is a PD approved for medical office. The property itself is approved for medical office. Uh, to the east, this is approved for medical office. So west, you've got a Kings Avenue and to the north in this area is a multifamily. And so that area to the north is the only area that the code would require buffering and screening. And we will be providing buffering and screening in accordance with the code. Available for any questions. Thank you. Uh, the applicant, uh, Mr. Truett Gardner is here. Have you been sworn in, sir? I have. Can you hear me and see me? Yes, sir. Uh, you, have 15, you have 15 minutes. Perfect. I'll take far less than that. And, and actually, um, Brian and Joe did a fantastic job. Just for clarity's sake, items E8 and E9 are linked. E8 is the northern parcel, which Mr. Grady was just showing. And then E9 is the parcel to the south. The developer of both of those is Herod Properties. Uh, you'll see on your, as far as the applicant, there are single purpose entities for E8, it's HHD Kings North LLC. And for E9, it's HHD Brandon MV LLC. And these are medical office buildings. These sites are uh, west of the Brandon Regional Hospital. And this was more of a timing issue than anything. The hope was to develop these at the same time but they had a difficulty getting the northern parcel under contract before the southern parcel. So we proceeded with the southern parcel first. That required us at the time, because of the use on the north, to have buffers. And then subsequently, we got the northern parcel under contract, rezoned it in December of 2018, which then uh, took away the need to have that use to use buffer. But it was stated um, on the site plans. And so this is mainly just a cleanup effort to uh, reduce the buffer because we now have a use to use that's similar. And it also allows us to take down the requirement of a masonry wall. And you will note on the site plans, there is connectivity between the Northern and the Southern parcels. So, so that's it. And hope I'm not confusing matters by taking these two together. Um, but I did want to point out to the board, the linkage between the two 
which I think tells the story of why this makes sense. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you. But members, be able to mind, we're going to take we're both on this separately. We're on a eight at this particular point in time. Um, is there? This is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak as a uh, proponent on E8? Anyone wishing to speak as a proponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Anyone wishing to speak as an opponent? Applicant, wave your time. Rebuttal time. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Motion by Commissioner Second. Woodman, second by Commissioner White to approve um, item E8. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Mr. Moretta. Thank you, commissioners. This brings us to E9, personal appearance 20 0660. This takes us to 515 South Kings Avenue, a 3.1 acre parcel. The request is to modify the buffering screen on the site plan and provide a default with the land development code. Uh, land development code buffering screen, as we noted, uh, this can, is calibrated based on the adjacent use. When a similar use is adjacent, no buffering and screening is required. When the use intensity changes, then the, the buffering and screening also uh, comes into effect and typically goes up. Uh, Mr. Bryant Grady can either walk you to that site or, or we can we can move forward with this. Let's just move forward. Okay, Mr. Gardner. Happen. Yes, so, so uh, simply put, this is the Southern site to the site that Mr. Grady just showed you before. Uh, the medical office building, which is state-of-the-art and first class, has already been constructed here. So this is simply to take away the need to do the buffer on the north side since Herod Properties has subsequently purchased the property to the north. Thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. Does anyone wish to speak as a proponent? Anyone wish to speak as a proponent? Anyone wish to speak as an opponent? <clears throat> anyone wish to speak as an opponent? Applicant waves rebuttal time. Move approval. Motion by Commissioner Merman. Second. Second by Commissioner Kemp. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried seven to zero. Thank you Thank for you. your time. Mr. Moretta, before we move into these school, uh, school concurrencies, can we see if uh, the applicant and staff have worked out uh, any uh, differences with, uh, on item E3? I believe this, we're, we're ready to move on this item. Okay. Item E3, we did speak with the applicant and discuss the potential discuss, uh, construction of the road. Um, where we um, moved the discussion is that um, the, the section that's cited in the um, in the staff report as the TS3 section, um, if if this road is is the board's inclined to keep the requirement for the road, uh, we would request that that be removed, and we could work with the applicant on the. Uh, the um, standard of construction to not bind it to that specific standard, but to provide some flexibility for uh, cost efficiencies. Um, th that being said, I understand that the applicant still has concerns. Um, I'll let the, ask the applicant to speak to that, but I understand that they are still not in agreement with, uh, with, with that, that condition uh, as modified. Applicant. Thank you, Michael Horner, 14502 North Hill Maybe Highway, representing the applicant. We had a very constructive, uh, civil, and cordial telephone conference with Mike Williams and staff. Unfortunately, commissioners, this comes down to time and cost. Uh, and we are on the south end of both of those issues, unfortunately. Even if we were allowed to proceed, and this condition was mandated, we would have to go into a extension as Miss. Hefner advised you that extension would most likely not be granted. And even if it was, it would delay the project another six months to a year. 
And we'd be looking at another, I think just the extension charge is $60,000 in addition to uh, the cost that Mr. Couch quoted you. So I love compromise. I've worked my whole life around compromise with staff. Unfortunately, we are not able to accept uh, those conditions today. And we would ask the board accept uh, the modified conditions that I read into the record. And, and we tried, commissioners. We, we just are unable to get there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. What's your pleasure? Move approval of the item with the conditions as proposed by the applicant. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner White. Is there a discussion? Commissioner Smith, you recognize. Thanks. Uh, I would just say that I think uh, with the staff offering to compromise even beyond my own comfort zone with uh, uh, compromising on the design standards um, and and uh, the applicant still sticking where they are, I won't be able to support that. I, I could support it all the way down to uh, uh, the new compromise that the staff has ordered but uh, or agreed to, but I, I wouldn't be able to support this um, the the uh, uh, dead end street with no with you know really no connectivity the the reasons are the same everybody gives they don't want cut through traffic and it costs a lot and it makes the project more difficult so um i won't be able to support that thank you commissioner hagan you recognize uh thank you mr chair and i i concur with uh, with commissioner smith uh I, I obviously affordable housing is important it's a priority of this board but I got to tell you, in my time in office, I don't ever recall uh, an applicant uh, requesting to remove an access condition because they can't afford the project. I admire um, the candor and honesty. However, it just doesn't sit well. And so uh, I'm going to be unable to support the, the motion on the floor. Commissioner Overman, you recognize. Thank you. And this, this is a tough decision. Um, I do believe in cross access, but we're talking about 110 units. Um, not normally where we're talking about 400 units or some really very large number. Um, so I'm going to support the motion. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hagen, Commissioner Overman, y'all can remove your hands if you're done. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Merman, second by Commissioner White to approve item E3. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? No. Hagen? No. Kemp? No. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? No. White? Yes. Motion failed three to four. Commissioners Miller, Hagen, Kemp, and Smith voted no. Okay, Mr. Moretta. Let's enter this case till the next item, please, and have a regroup discussion with our staff, please. Excuse me? It's Michael Horner again. This is dire important. Could we please regroup for just one more discussion of 20 minutes and come right back to you? Mr. Horner, uh, the body has voted. I don't know what you're going to do to change. You have to get someone that was on the prevailing side to reconsider this motion. Um, if you want to go back out and, and try to work on it, if we can get a member of this body, uh, this board to reconsider the vote by which it failed, uh, we could do that. But you want to do that? For the request for that reconsideration vote, just to give us one more shot at uh, discussion of this item. This well, you had a shot of about 30 minutes. We we now realize that this is not going to be possible. Uh, I think we have to move forward with this. We've asked for that TS3 as an option. Um, we did not think that's going to be possible. If need be, we'll do that reluctantly and ask for reconsideration. Tell you what you do, Mr. Horner. If you want to go outside and, and, and communicate, go ahead. You come back, and if there's anyone on the prevailing side that voted no, wishing to move to reconsider the vote by which it failed, we'll do that. If we don't get that, it's uh, it's done, okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Hagen, you hand up? Yeah, yes, sir, real quick. I apologize. I've got to go uh, pick my daughter up from school, so I'll be back. Uh, probably about 30, 40 minutes. But I also want to say the applicant had ample opportunity uh, to revise their condition and staff bent over backwards to try to accommodate them and it still wasn't good enough. And now they want to 
third or fourth bite of the apple. So I'm going to impose that if I'm present uh, for, for any type of reconsideration. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Mr. Beretta. Thank you, commissioners. This brings us to item E10. Excuse me, excuse, excuse, Commissioner Hagan, before you leave, can you put your hand, excuse me, excuse me, Commissioner Hagan, if you're still there, can you move your hand, put your hand down, please? Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Beretta, go ahead. Please. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, we're getting into the portion of the agenda where we have school concurrency, proportionate share, mitigation development agreements. Mr. Adam Gorman is going to handle this portion of the agenda uh, to the conclusion. So it's been nice meeting with you and we'll see you at the next board meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, uh, Joe. Thank you, uh, board members. Uh, items E10 through E21 are all school concurrency proportionate share development agreements. Uh, half of these agreements, uh, items, sorry, E16 through E21, uh, the board heard at last Wednesday's regular BOCC meeting and we'll be holding the second and adoption public hearing on those uh, six applications. Uh, the items E10 through E15 are the first public hearings uh, on a new batch of prop share agreements. And these will be scheduled for the adoption public hearing to be held at the September 16th BOCC land use meeting. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I'll run through the, the items. Each one of these is a public hearing. Item E10 is a school concurrency proportionate share agreement with DR Horton as the applicant. This is for the Mangrove Point phase one, two, and three subdivisions, which consists of 286 single family attached units. Uh, the project will be making a contribution in the amount of $390,425 to construct 14 middle school seats to accommodate the impacts of this project. The second public hearing will be held September 16th at 10 a.m. Okay. This is a public hearing. Is the applicant here? Was there, would there be an applicant? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes, this is Elise Batzel with Stearns Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson. Have um, you been sworn in? Available to answer any questions that you have on this. Have you been sworn in? Yes, I have, thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on the uh, item E10? Anyone wishing to speak on item E10? Close the public hearing. Uh, we'll come back and discuss this until September 16th. Mr. Moret, I'm Mr. Uh, Gormley, I'm sorry. Thank you. Item E11 is a school concurrency proportionate share uh, development agreement with DR Horton Inc. This is for the Mangrove Manor phase one and two subdivision division, which consists of 203 single family detached units. The project will be making a contribution of $501,975 to construct 18 middle school student stations to accommodate the project's impact. This is a public hearing. The second public hearing will be held September 16th at 10 a.m. Applicant. Yes, sir, Commissioner Miller, uh, Elise Batzel, Stearns Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson. We don't have any further comments at this time, but are available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. This is a, uh, a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item E11? Anyone wishing to speak on item E11? Close the public hearing. This is the first of two public hearings. The second public hearing will be held on September 16th. Mr. Gormley. Item E12 has been continued. I'll move to item E13. This is a school concurrency proportionate share development agreement with Hillsborough County 301 LLC. This is for the Belmont multifamily project, which consists of 300 multifamily units. The project will be making a contribution of $1,292,126 to construct 35 elementary and 13 middle school student stations to accommodate the impacts of the project. Uh, this is a public hearing. The second public hearing will be held September 16th at 10 a.m. Applicant. Is the applicant here? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, Michael Brooks for the... Have you been sworn in? Shepard Roaches, 606 Madden. Have you been sworn in, Mr. Brooks? I apologize. I have not been. Just please swear him in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Proceed, sir. You have 15 minutes. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't need that much time. We're just here to answer any questions. And I, I will say I've also signed up for E18 and E21, and unless there are any questions of those ones as well, I will uh, just reserve my time and, and watch from the back. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item E13? Anyone wishing to speak on item E13? Close the public hearing. This is the first of two public hearings. The second public hearing will be held September 16th. Mr. Gormley. Item E14 is a school concurrency proportionate share development agreement with DR Horton Inc. This is for the proposed Copper Creek townhomes project consisting of 26 single family attached units. The project will be making a contribution in the amount of $135,451 to construct three elementary and two middle school student stations. This is a public hearing. The second public hearing will be held on September 16th at 10 a.m. The applicant available. Uh, Elise Batzel with Stearns Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson Street. Um, we're available for any questions. And as Mr. Brooks stated, I am here for E15, E17, E19, and E20. Um, again, I don't have further comments on those unless you have any questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item E14? Anyone wishing to speak on item E14? It closes the public hearing. This is the first of two public hearings. The second public hearing will be held on September 16th. Mr. Gormley. Item E15 is a school concurrency proportionate shared development agreement with DDFL South Creek LLC. This is for the South Creek Phase 2 multifamily project consisting of 363 multifamily units. The project will be making a contribution of $418,313 to construct 15 middle school student stations to accommodate the impacts of the project. This is a public hearing. The second public hearing will be held on September 16th at 10 a.m. Okay, I think the applicant has already uh, been forth. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone wish to speak on item E15? Anyone wishing to speak on item E15? Let's close the public hearing. Uh, this is the first of two public hearings. The second public hearing will be held on September 16th. Mr. Gormley. Thank you. I'll move into item E16. E16 through E21 will all be second adoption public hearings. Item E16 is a school concurrency proportionate shared development agreement with Dune FB Debt LLC. This is for the South Bay, formerly known as Forest Brook Subdivision, consisting of 234 single family attached and 203 single family detached units. The project will be making a contribution of $808,723 to construct 29 middle school student stations uh, for the project. This is a public hearing adoption. Uh, applicant. Um, Good morning, William Malloy, 325 South Boulevard, Tampa. Have you Florida. been sworn in, sir? I have been sworn, and I'm just here to answer any questions about this. Okay. This is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item E16? Anyone wishing to speak on item E16? Hearing none, close the public hearing. What's your pleasure? Move approval. Motion by Commissioner Merman. Second. Second by Commissioner Kemp. To approve item E16. See no further discussion. Please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Megan? Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you, Mr. Gormley. Item E17 is a school concurrency proportionate share development agreement with Eisenhower Property Group, LLC. This is for the South Creek Phase 2A, 2B, and 2C subdivision, consisting of 117 single-family detached units. The project will make a contribution of $330,666 to construct nine uh, middle school and three elementary school student stations. The uh, to accommodate the impacts of the project. This is a public hearing. Applicant. No further comments, sir. Okay, thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item E17? Anyone wishing to speak on item E17? Closes the public hearing. 
What's your pleasure? Mayor Most Second. by Commissioner Merman. Second, Second by who is that, Commissioner Overman? Yes. Okay. Uh, seeing no further discussion, please call the roll item E17. Miller? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Mr. Gormley. Item E18 is a school concurrency proportionate share de uh, development agreement uh, with Cal Atlantic Group Inc. This is for the Lycee phase three subdivision consisting of 84 single family detached units. The project will be making a contribution of $249,659 to construct one elementary and eight middle school students uh, to accommodate the impacts of this project. This is a public hearing. Applicant. I think the applicant already said something, I'm sorry. This is a public hearing. Anyone wish to speak on item E18? Anyone wishing to speak on item E18? Close the public hearing. What's your pleasure? Move approval. Motion Second. by Commissioner Orman, Second by Commissioner Merman to approve item E18. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Mr. Gormley. Item E19 is a school concur concurrency proportionate share uh, mitigation development agreement with Spencer, I'm sorry, Creek Preserve Development LLC. Uh, this is for the Creek Preserve Phase 9 subdivision consist consisting of 38 single family detached units. The project will be making a contribution in the amount of $324,000. $27 to build eight elementary and four middle school student stations to accommodate the impacts of the project. This is a public hearing. Thank you, sir. I think the applicant already has spoken on this. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item E19? Anyone wishing to speak on item E19? Close the public hearing. What's your pleasure? Second. Second by Commissioner Merman. Second by Commissioner Overman to approve item E19. Senate further discussion. Please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Sorry. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Mr. Gormley. Hey, item E20 is a school concurrency proportionate share mitigation development agreement with Rodine Development LLC. This is for the Belmont Reserve subdivision. Uh, the project will be making a contribution in the amount of $1,317,355 to construct 16 elementary and 32 middle school student stations to accommodate the impacts of the project. Uh, this is a public hearing. Applicant, did you speak on this already? Okay, believe it. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item E20? Anyone wishing to speak on item E20? Close the public hearing. What's your pleasure? Second. Motion by Commissioner Merman, second by Commissioner Overman to approve item E20. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Thank you, Mr. Gormley. Commissioners, our last uh, public hearing is item E21. This is a school concurrency proportionate share mitigation development agreement with Hillsborough 301 LLC. This is for the Belmont Townhomes Parcel F subdivision which consists of 160 single family attached units. The project will be making a contribution in the amount of $223,100 to construct eight middle school student stations to accommodate the impacts of the project. This is a public hearing. 
Thank you. I think the applicant already uh, talked about this. So we're going to go into the public hearing. This is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak uh, on item E21? Anyone wishing to speak on item E21? Close the public hearing. What's your pleasure? Motion by Commissioner Oman, second by Commissioner Merman. <laughs> Seeing no further discussion, <laughs> please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Mr. Gormley. Commissioner, that will take us to item K1 on your agenda. Uh, this is the first of two school board, uh, school district uh, items. The first item K1 is a request uh, that the board uh, essentially mandate the payment of school uh, district, uh, school board adopted review fees as part of rezoning and comprehensive uh, plan review applications. The little brief background that the school board recently uh, hired a consultant to identify the costs of services they provide, including reviews of rezoning applications and comprehensive plan amendments. Uh, they identified a cost for review and adopted a review fee. Uh, at the present time, that review fee is not part of uh, the, the, the uh, development services schedule or, or there's really no tie into that. So there's no there's no interplay between uh, our processing of applications and the payment of that fee. What the school district requests before you today is is to make is to create that tie-in and essentially um, require that uh, any school board adopted review fee be paid before an applicant can either rezoning or comprehensive plan amendment uh, moves forward to to a hearing. I believe we have Miss Amber Dickerson on the. Uh, WebEx in the event uh, she has would like to add anything to the request or in the event the board has any questions on this item. Okay, uh, do we have to vote on this item, Mr. Gormley? I'm sorry, sir. Do we need to vote on this item? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions on the item? Anyone Move have the any item. Pardon me? Move the item. Motion by Commissioner Smith. Second. Second by Commissioner Oldman on item K. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Mr. Gormley. Thank you, board members. The last item today is an off the agenda item. Uh, this is a presentation by the school district of their five year work plan uh, and some recent concurrency, school concurrency uh, uh, items that they've identified. Let's be a brief background for the board. Uh, the board. Board of County Commissioners, the school board, and the Planning Commission uh, have an interlocal agreement amongst us uh, that governs, amongst other things, school concurrency reviews and school siting. As part of that interlocal agreement, uh, the school board uh, sends us each year their tentative five-year facilities work plan uh, that, that uh, identifies capacity improvements that will be made over the next five years uh, for, for school sites or school facilities. Uh, the counties, uh, per the interlocal agreement, uh, comment on that five-year plan and identify infrastructure and service needs that would be associated with those schools if they were uh, cited. Um, we have recently had some, uh, some experience with, with a school site request that I addressed, the board, uh, addressed with the board in June where there was a challenge with providing the infrastructure for a proposed school site, and that school site was not uh, approved for siting. Uh, this is um, sort of a follow up to that, I think for, for the board's benefit of hearing the, the plan and what the board, what the school district plan is for facilities in the next five years, what challenges they're experiencing, and hopefully how we can work 
together with the school board to help meet some of those challenges, which I'd say is, is a fast growing uh, segment of South County. And uh, as, as has been stated, some challenges uh, that the school district has experienced in citing schools. Uh, we do think that there is a uh, opportunity to look at some uh, sites, some things that, that the board has recently uh, seen in terms of potential school sites in the county, and we've identified that um, in our correspondence to the school district staff, uh, and that correspondence is included in the uh, backup for this item, which came with the addendum. So uh, with that, I, uh, I do also want to highlight a, a, a uh, sort of caution about uh, the school board's um, feeling of being able to continue with proportionate share agreements like was on the agenda today. And uh, so it asks that, that that conversation be shared with the board. Uh, we do have school district representatives on the line. Uh, I, I believe that we have Ms. Amber Dickerson, uh, perhaps Chris Farkas and Addison Davis, and they have a, I believe a PowerPoint presentation uh, that they're wanting to make to the board. Um, and so that I'll ask uh, if, who is it that we have on the line from the school district to speak to this item? Hello, this is Amber Dickerson with Hillsborough County Schools. Um, Addison Davis and Chris Farkas will be potentially joining us soon. They are actually in a school board workshop right now. Okay. So I will share my screen, bear with me. Okay, um, just to confirm, can you see my screen? No, ma'am. How about now? Okay. Okay, so we have a, prepared a PowerPoint for you today. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to speak with you today. Um, as Adam alluded to on the five-year plan, school siting issues, and um, where we are with school concurrency. So the outline and objectives for today, we wanna go through the five-year plan. We want to talk about school siting traffic infrastructure issues, evaluate the critical need for school sites, Act, assess the consequences of no school sites potentially, and discuss the next steps and solutions. So this is a snapshot um, of our five-year plan. So year one are the schools that actually open this August, New Sumner High School with a small middle school component, also the new Belmont Elementary School D, um, Tampa Heights Elementary School, formerly known as Lee, Elementary School, which actually unfortunately burnt, and then we are reconstructing it to open January 2020. We're also contemplating the Spoto High School Edition, Waimama Elementary Edition. These are both located in the South County area to absorb new development. We're also building a new PK-8 at a dedicated site within the water set development. We are looking at Collins to add an addition. This is contingent upon a property to the north that actually Hillsborough County owns for a park site. Um, so we've been talking to your staff about that potential. And then a new PK-8 in Manhattan site, which is in South Tampa. And lastly, a new partially funded high school, um, which we have slated for um, the Bishop Road site that has not gone through the full siting process. So this is really just a different way to look at the five-year plan, which is broken up into the different school types, elementary combination, middle school and high school. These are project revenues, 1.8 million in funding total. We wanna thank all of the voters for supporting our referendum for our sales tax revenue of um, 550 
million dollars in a five-year period we're projecting that really helps us with the deferred maintenance that we have um, we're also having 190 million over the five years for new construction in addition we use our funds for modular placement so those overcrowded schools we place modulars um, in the interim until we can build a new school bus purchases site purchases are somewhat um, new as well, since we did get an increase in impact fee money, we're uh, able to buy more sites. And then lastly, health, life, and safety. So um, there's a lot going on with this slide, but it represents all of the current possible school sites. Highlighted in blue are the sites reserved with approved plan developments. In orange is the Bishop Road site that we own. And in gray is a site that is under contract for purchase. We recently received the county's review of our district five-year work plan. So we wanted to take this opportunity to comment. Um, in it, they encouraged us to locate school sites within planned developments. However, there are some challenges with planned development sites. Um, that are reserved for schools. First, ownership. We don't own these properties, therefore we must negotiate dedication agreements for each site with developers. If they don't agree to the terms of the price, um, the developer can develop those sites as residential. If the appraised value comes back um, and the developer does not agree to that, we would need a super majority of our board to vote for any price above the average of two appraisals. Also, timing. These sites are located on substandard roadways or are in the center of undeveloped PD projects. The county has stated they can coordinate with developers for the required infrastructure, but timing is a concern. We need sites now. Also acreage. None of the sites are large enough to accommodate a high school, which requires 50 acres. We have a new high school slated for the fifth year of the five-year plan on Bishop Road, which we own, but is surrounded by substandard roadways. Also desirability. Frequently the sites are not maybe the best quality properties and are not always located in the best locations to serve students. Um, we want to know which is the best PD site in the county's opinion prior to starting the very costly siting process. The traffic study alone for Bishop Road cost the districts and taxpayers $10,000, and we still arrived at a finding of no consistency. At the end of the day, there are no current sites that have adequate transportation infrastructure to support a school in South County, and that is a problem that we must address. We cannot depend on reserve plan development school sites alone to solve this issue as they have their own challenges and there are not enough locations for those school sites. So how did we get here? Um, the district didn't have enough money through impact fees to build schools or buy property for a very long time. And I wanna take a moment to thank you all personally for increasing the school impact fee. This will help us immensely. It's no secret that there is also a transportation infrastructure problem in South County, which is now negatively impacting school infrastructure to serve students that are moving into the area. We are really stuck between a rock and a hard place because we are legally prohibited from using school funds to build non-contiguous roadways, yet we need schools to serve new students. Again, there are no properties in this area that are located on non-substandard roadways. We have no sites to spend the increased impact fee revenue to build new schools. The development community will still be, soon be impacted because without new projects to pay towards, the school district will no longer be able to process mitigation agreements which translates to approved developments not being able to build. Overcrowding of schools has many negative impacts to students, staff, and the community, and create politically tough issues. We may have to do double sessions, which would mean different grades would have different bell times, which would mean 
four bus runs per school, which is a nightmare for everyone involved. We must build new schools. Per the Long Range Plan, we need to build at least two schools a year on average to keep pace with growth. By this time next year, we will have to squeeze close to 3,000 new students onto existing campuses that are already overcrowded. We must solve this crisis. We know there's no easy solution to the transportation issue in South County. It all comes down to funding but we must build new schools. The students from approved developments, which are also located on substandard roadways, are surrounding our Bishop Road property, which is highlighted in the slide. Next steps. As we all know, public education is the foundation of any thriving community. So this is a community issue. We cannot solve this issue by working in silos and time is truly of the essence. We are suggesting to create a public school citing task force consisting of decision makers and topic experts listed on the slide. We need to meet frequently so we can get some traction on these issues. I'm confident that the talent and aptitude of this team will have the ability to tackle this most important issue. We have to come up with some creative solutions. Either allow schools to be located on substandard roadways or find funding to develop the transportation infrastructure that is required to support schools. We should not make the decision to force students to attend overcrowded schools because transportation infrastructure is extremely underfunded which we all know is a massive problem with no solution in sight. Thank you all for this opportunity to speak with you today. Um, we are here and we are all here because we want at the end of the day, what's best for our communities. I know we can work together to solve this problem. Our team is here to address any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation. I appreciate it. I have been in on some of those meetings uh, concerning uh, these issues that you have, and we do appreciate the uh, the opportunity uh, for you to be here. Let me ask you a question concerning the, um, I think it was a committee that you were looking at. Yes, sir. When do, you, when do you propose that committee coming together? Because what I saw there is you're asking for a county commission to be on there, which would have to come back before our full board. When are you asking uh that? As soon as possible, sir. Um, we understand that every board has to have someone um, elected to that um, position. So, but at the same time, we need it as soon as possible because the situation is pretty urgent. Okay, I thought I saw Ms. Wise on here. I do not see her now. She may be gone. Uh, but I'll ask Ms. Wise if she can hear me. Yes, she is on there. I'm Ms. Here. Wise, could you put that on the uh, our agenda? Um, for our upcoming meeting next week? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Commissioner Smith, you recognize. Thank you. Um, and I also have talked to uh, talked to Ms. Dickerson a couple of in a couple of meetings with about this issue with um, a different school board members and even the superintendent at, at one point, um, it is an issue. Um, Ms. Dickerson, would you please put up that, that slide that showed the location of several, um, school sites you're looking at in South County? Yes, ma'am. Get that back up. Can you see this slide, ma'am? Well, that 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 will that will do. I was looking at one uh, a couple of slides earlier than that, where you had the. Uh, ur there we go. Okay. Um, and as you talked about the school sites that are listed on this plan, you noted that they all have uh, problems, but especially now. Um, it's number five and number six that are inside 
uh, PDs that we've approved those those sites, right? And um, yes, actually, all of the blue sites. So one, two, five, and six. Uh huh. And what happens there is that um, we, the board of county commissioners, get a rezoning. Uh, application that for, you know, a thousand, eleven hundred houses in some cases, some of these cases, and it includes the agreement by the school district to say, um, you know, in your comment, well, not you, per well, the school district's comments that you're okay with those developments, given that you're getting this school site, but, um, it, now, I mean, clearly those school sites have a myriad of issues there. The siting is uh, uh, not optimal for schools in a lot of ways. They're uh, on dangerous roads, um, substandard roads. The timing still has to be worked out and the pricing uh, with the developers, and you may not be able to work that out within the within the time frame that's in the, the zoning. But, but given that the school district has signed off on the agreement and said, sure, we can agree to this uh, if the developer donates or, or provides, not donates, but, but sells us this land for the school siting, it comes to us, the county commissioners, and, and, and you have commissioners on this board, uh, not only myself, other ones saying, but wait a minute, that doesn't look like a good site for a school. It's on roads that are substandard that would be dangerous for, for uh, pedestrian and bicycles and, and school students to get to. It's, um, uh, it's you know tucked in some odd corner of the development, but, but we're sitting here as commissioners uh, trying to um, say the issues with that rezoning that you've just said today, but were not noted at all on the comments. So it's difficult for us to for us to sort that out here when the developer or the applicant will be saying, "But hey, commissioner, you're 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 listing all these bad issues with these school sites, but we've already worked that out with the school district." So, so that's already agreed to by the district. And I think one thing that we really need is for the school district to be involved in helping us decide whether or not we can afford to put 1,100 houses at where six is and 1,100 houses where five is, given that there is no place to put those children realistically instead of us getting a comment sheet that says don't worry they're going to dedicate a site that later on uh, turns into a crisis that later on turns into a crisis and if you would just show uh the slide four slides up from four slides past this the one you started with with the bishop road site when these developments came in, the the one on the south, the, the uh, in the pink, um, when that one came in and these other ones we looked at, um, some of us here on the board, when they came to us, were saying, how are these children gonna get to school? Bishop Road is a substandard road. It will be dangerous to put children and bicycles and all this extra traffic on that, those substandard roads. Um, but again, uh, the applicant can sit here and say, but the school district signed off on it. They're fine with it in their comments. And so I think part of our problem is that we need to look at the process by which we decide to put all these houses and students out there and then figure out the school siting later and and um, I would ask the school district as as and I know I've discussed this with uh, uh, Mr. Davis, and I'm happy to see him being able to join us here today, to to um, help in your comments to um, let us know ahead of time that a crisis will be looming if we put this many students here, here, and there. 
uh, with these substandard roads and substandard school sites that you're not going to be able to use so that we can um, uh, look at those comments and understand what it is we're being asked to approve uh, and what problems will be coming up now before we're in a crisis situation. Thank you. Okay, may I respond? Yes, Ms. Dickerson, go ahead. Okay, well, first of all, I appreciate your comments. I understand where you're coming from. Um, however, there are no non-standard, non-standard, non substandard roadways. So there are no roadways that we can find, locate property in South County that can support a school site. So that's that's one big issue. So let's say we did say in the rezoning, you know, yes, we want the property. Um, obviously, we don't want to leave ourselves with no options at all. Um, but no matter what in this area, there are no roads that are standard in which we can build. So that presents a challenge. Additionally, we have historically not recommended denial of any rezoning application because the concurrency system and the way that it's structured right now allows developments to move through the process and concurrency is triggered at preliminary plat level. So I think there is an opportunity to reevaluate the way that the concurrency system is structured moving forward in order to bring those more difficult conversations um, up earlier in the process. But right now, the school board really doesn't have that kind of leverage in how the system is structured right now. Also, developers are not required to dedicate school sites in zonings, rezoning applications. So the district requests on any larger applications if we may have a school site. The developer does not have to agree to that condition and they are still allowed to move forward. So, so that's an issue too. And, and you're right, that could be addressed probably with different comprehensive plan language and different land development code language. But the way it is written now, we really don't have much leverage to say, no, we want a school site here, specifically right here. And even if we did, like I stated before, None of these new PDs that have been approved have standard roadways within or adjacent to the school sites. So I really do appreciate your comments and I think that that is where this school siting task force could really take action upon is to make sure that this system works for all parties involved and that we have these difficult conversations earlier in the process. Okay, Commissioner Overman, you recognize. Thank you, thank you, Chair. And thank you, Ms. Dickerson, for your presentation. Um, as you know, and or may or may not know, but I'm a passionate supporter of pedestrian and bicycle safety and either through the, the Safe Routes to School or for Vision Zero, what your, your comments and concerns are, are well uh, heard. Um, but I know we have to do this proactive approach and collaborative approach. So I'm, I'm glad to see that you're bringing forward a task force, um, but it does need to address the concerns you have about the steps for, for approval when it comes to concurrency, um, we have to have um, a, a better partnership with the school board uh, for assuring that we don't, as we already have, develop beyond the capacity of, of your five-year plan. Um, for example, the highest capacity projections appear for middle schools in South County, especially Shields Middle School, which is projected to be at 179% capacity in, within the next five years. 
However, outside of PK through magnet, uh, PKH Magnet School on the five-year plan in South County near Apollo Beach, it appears that this has not been addressed in your plan. Um, so uh, other than the challenges associated with continual growth in that area and the fact that we have substandard roads, how are we going to address the compa capacity issues for our middle schools, given that they're not within your plan that I could see? Well, actually, one of the sites that we do have and own is the Bishop Road site. So like, like I alluded to in one of the slides, for a long time, we did not have the ability to be very aggressive in seeking out new properties for new schools because really the impact fee represented about half of the actual student station costs. So the district actually went into about $1 billion worth of debt um, over that time period in order to keep pace with growth. Um, so now that we do have more funds available to us, we do seek out to buy new properties. So Bishop Road was one of the properties that we um, took the initiative to purchase. In addition, we have another um, property of 100 acres that would fit a high school or a combination of middle school and elementary. And we have engaged a broker to actively look for any school sites in this area. Um, so I, I feel like it's addressed in our plan as much as possible. However, we do have to go through the school siting process through the interlocal agreement, which the county has to sign off on basically any school site that we proposed. One of the major components of that review is the transportation infrastructure. So let's say we did have and we procured five very large sites in this area, we will not be able to develop those unless they can be located on standard roads, which do not exist right now. So we, our staff is fully motivated on building schools. We want to spend these new impact fees. Um, we are engaging every possible avenue to seek out school sites. But at the end of the day, if there's not transportation infrastructure in place, we will be unable to open new schools. Okay. Chairman, to follow up with a question? Very short, we, we got a lot more than agenda, Commissioner Oval. Okay, understood. So are you suggesting that maybe uh, coordination between our transportation department and our TIP be necessary for any future school siting in order to facilitate the need to address our financing of infrastructure in those areas? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Commissioner cool. Kemp, you recognize briefly, please. I don't know how brief to be, but, um, well, you know, we'll, we'll I, it's, it it's interesting. It's interesting that for the first time ever, um, this has been called a crisis. And I've really thought it's been a crisis for ever since I became a commissioner. And it's very frustrating to look at this. And I think it's really um, indicates that, that the system's broken. And there has very obviously been years of a de more than a decade of fiscal recklessness and planning around this. Um, in the case of the impact fees, um, I worked very hard uh, outside to try to get the momentum going when unlike the usual, um, we had had an increase in our school impact fees since 2006. Counties all over had them every three years and they were caught up. We have been starved for, um, or the school system's been starved for the money to do this. As well, we've been starved in our mobility fees for the money to do proper construction, sidewalks, infrastructure throughout this county and have not planned for it and have not designed it. And we're so far behind the eight ball that it's, it's, well, as you termed it a crisis, I called it a crisis. I think it was a crisis many years ago, um, and yet we, we find ourselves in this position. So I'd say our current system of how we're working this, and I'm not sure what the particulars should be, but I am 
I cannot believe that other places do not do a better job of coordinating, working, and planning um, how they will cite schools. I realize we have these tremendous growth pressures here, which um, I, I think we needed to have um, responded to those way sooner than this. Um, and I agree, we need places for kids to go to school. We need safe places for them to walk to school and infrastructure around it. Um, I'm very interested in how this will go forward. Um, I'm not sure, uh, you know, what things we have to change in our comprehensive plan, in our process to accommodate this. I think a committee talking about it and learning about perhaps other place, other ways we can do this better would be a, a good start. Um, but it looks, um, as if we're in a um, world of hurt, um, then it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, and we have only just started to address this now. Um, and, you know, we're gonna have a lot of uh, rolling up our sleeves for the next decade or two, if we want to do anything reasonable to accommodate what is hitting us now. Commissioner Merman, you recognize. Mr. Merman, you recognize. Sorry. Okay. Um, all the comments have been said, so I'll make this very quick. Um, you know, we've always been very supportive of the school district. This is an age-old problem. Commissioner Miller will remember this going back to days in the legislature. Hillsborough County has always been um, behind playing catch-up on school capacity. And so the, the only issue, I think the committee will be good for process, but if you're talking about committee getting together to talk about asking us for transportation dollars, I mean, we don't have it. I mean, we're waiting on the Supreme Court to act. Um, and if that goes through, hallelujah, that will help. If it doesn't, we're gonna be back um, in front of the voters in two years, and you're still not going to have the funding you need right away. So if the committee is being put together because you're gonna demand infrastructure dollars for transportation, I think you need to uh, seriously look at the situation we're in here at Hillsborough County uh, going forward, because I, um, I just, I, I'm like, I'm kind of confused that we're still, uh, the dog wagon, you know, chasing its tail. And um, why have we gotten to this point? And you all, of course, have successful uh, school tax pass. Um, we haven't gotten uh, the luxury of that happening here in Hillsborough County yet. So thank you. Okay. Uh, I see the superintendent on. Mr. Superintendent, do you have any comments? Yes, sir. Thank you so very much. Sorry that uh, I was tardy. I was with the board. The board working on policy this morning, but being able to transition. And thank you, Amber, for for making the presentation. And uh, overall, we just want to, you know, I'm coming in in the middle of this movie related to our past relationship about identifying locations, determining funding, infrastructure. But as everyone said, I think that every commissioner said it beautifully. That it definitely is a uh, you know a time where it's a, it's a major concern. We are exploding at the South County perspective with 31 schools in the next 15 years. And as Amber spoke about, there, you know, the substandard roads are everywhere within the communities. But I think that uh, that everyone being at the table to be able to do to problem solve, decision make, and really work in concert to be able to discuss what we can and cannot accomplish related to our, uh, you know, our capacities at our schools, I think would be allow us to move forward in a more efficient manner. You know, back to, uh, you know, uh, Commissioner, you know, Merman said, I, you know, I wish we had that dollar tree to be able to pull through it for the um, for the infrastructure. <laughs> we know it doesn't exist. And I agree completely with Commissioner uh, uh, Kemp that's saying that this definitely is a crisis. But everyone said it so very well today. We thank you. You have full accessibility to our staff, including me, to be a part of that, uh, you know, a part of this process. So whatever we can do to define what the task force roles and responsibilities will be and what inclusive measure that will, 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 uh, will entail, we, we're, we're all in to make certain that we are, are working a singular goal to continue to help this community. I think this is a beautiful problem to have from a, uh, from a community perspective where individuals are trying to transition to, our, to Hillsborough County and because it is a, a really neat special place. But we've got to make certain they're working in, uh, you know, in unison 
related to uh, strategic mapping for, for particular locations. And, um, but we're here to support this process and whatever time and in whomever you may need, we're here to, to help uh, for us to, to move forward. Thank you, uh, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Ms. Dickerson, for your presentation today. We look forward to uh, having a member of our board to serve on that committee and see if we can work things out for the betterment of this this community. We all know that we got to educate our kids, and uh, regardless, they're coming, and uh, we have to do what we possibly can, and we'll work everything out with that, okay? Thank you both for being here. We appreciate it very much. Okay. Mr. Gormley? Commissioner that Smith. Concludes our hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Today, Commissioner, uh, hold on, hold on. Mr. Gormley, Mr. Gormley, Mr. Gormley, uh, Mr. Gormley, Mr. Gormley, <laughs> hold on a minute. Commissioner Smith, you have some more comments? Yes, very brief. Um, Please. Yes, we all agree it's a crisis. And while we are looking for solutions, and I'm hearing that's going to take a while, putting together a committee and everything, while we're looking for solutions, I suggest we stop making the problem any worse. And I would ask the school district to help us in that regard to provide comments that allow us to evaluate future zonings that would add to the problem before we have solutions. So we can consider that as part of our uh, zoning process. Thank you. Mr. Gormley. Yes, commissioners, that, that concludes our agenda and our discussion on the uh, school items. Um, in the event uh, the board would like to take back up E3, I believe that's the only item that, that is potentially unaddressed. Uh, if not, our agenda is, is concluded. Is there any commissioner that was on the prevailing side wanting to um, um, vote to reconsider E3? Um, Commissioner Kemp. Commissioner Kemp, what? Um, I would I would like before I vote. <laughs> is there? Do we know that there's been a? Uh, you know, I would only consider re uh, supporting it if I find that they are willing to accept the conditions. <sighs> Mr. Um, Warner, are you there? I, I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner, question: I'm Michael Horner for the record. Uh, Commissioners, I just want to let you know that I've been in this business for 40 years, and I don't know if I've been in this position before. If this was not an affordable housing development, and I'll mark down market rate development, that condition would not have been an issue. We have, would have readily agreed to it. So I am not the developer. I am only the representative. The conditions that we had before you were very difficult to accept. We have modified one of those. I am also advising you that, that your denial on condition 1.1, which was a change in the floor plan layout, actually requires us now to go back and redesign all of the building architectural plans. So condition 1.1 is almost as important as condition 11. I stand humbly before you, commissioners. Uh, we are willing to accept a modified condition 11 uh, per Mr. Williams' acknowledgement, I believe Mr. Gormley spoke to you on that prior. If we could eliminate consistent with the county's typical section TS3, it may give us enough relief to try to get through that road construction process. Again, this is a private public partnership. Our units are cut down to 104, so you might as well amend condition one to delete 120 and insert 104. But we will accept that modified condition. We have to move forward. This is an important project. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Anything else? Um, yes, Anything else? Anything further before we adjourn? I would make a motion to reconsider. As a motion by Commissioner Kemp to reconsider the vote by which uh, E3 failed. Is there a second? Is there second. a second? Second. Second by Commissioner White. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, please, Commissioner Smith, you recognize. Okay, hey. Commissioner Smith, you unmute, unmute yourself. What is the motion? What a uh, what the motion is to reconsider in or the, out? The motion is the motion is the only thing we're doing is real, making a motion. The motion was made to reconsider the vote by which E3 failed, which means that motion passed, we go back and discuss E3 again. If the motion fails, we're done. Okay. 
Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to uh, by Commissioner Kemp, second by Commissioner White, to consider the vote by which E3 failed. Understand? Mr. Hagan, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to oppose the reconsideration. The applicant's representative had an opportunity to accept the revised condition by staff. They rolled the dice. Um, and so I'm going to I'm going to oppose the reconsideration. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll to reconsider the vote by which E3 failed. That's what we're voting on. Please call the roll. Miller? No. Hagan? No. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? No. White? Yes. Motion carried four to three. Commissioners Miller, Hagan, and Smith voted no. We're now back on E3. What's your pleasure? I move approval Second. with the conditions as proposed by the applicant. That was a motion by Commissioner Merman, second by Commissioner White to approve E3 with the conditions that the applicant accepted. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Smith, you recognize briefly. So the motion is not for the conditions that the applicant accepted. The, com the motion that Commissioner Merman is making is for the original motion. Oh, okay, I get it, sorry. With the applicant's conditions, I won't be able to support that. Thank you. All right. Commis Commissioner Kip, you recognize. Yeah, I, uh, I'll just say I won't be able to support that either since it was made with the original. Uh, with the uh, applicants, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I want to know that it will be with the staff's uh, conditions. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner, what I could offer is that we had initial conditions recommended by staff with the applicants requested condition following the board's adjournment. We had a revised condition that we'd be willing to, that we would be able to accept um, <coughs> that removes the reference to the county's typical TS3 section, and that will give some flexibility with providing for the design of the roadway. If that's what the intent of the board's motion is, that would be the change in the conditions. It would, it would still require the, the construction, but provide greater latitude in on how that roadway section gets constructed. Commissioner okay. Kemp, your hand is up, you recognize. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to, um, that clarification from staff that we will have that connectivity um, and that there, um, uh, that there will be, that the conditions will be simply that the staff will look at um, helping uh, to, uh, to look at how they can um, possibly uh, make this um, more affordable or a connection, what they could do. Ma'am, so so the the condition ten would remain as as included in the staff report. Condition twelve would remain as proposed in the staff report, and condition eleven would be modified to keep the requirement to construct, but remove the reference to the typical section TS three. Yes, ma'am. And, and what implications? May I just ask? What implications could that have um, in terms of the road? It will give some flexibility on the design, whether it's the shoulders, whether it's the road, whether it's the lane width. It won't. It won't hold it specifically to uh, the design with with no room for flexibility. Uh, of course, whenever we look at these uh, uh, deviations from typical section construction, we'll never move forward with approving or recommending anything that is unsafe. That provide perhaps some different. Um, uh, flexibility on the design to account for the, the fairly short roadway uh, segment in the area it's traversing. Commissioner Merman, you recognize. I just have one quick question to the applicant. Are you accepting what the um, staff has just proposed? We are, Commissioner. We will be building this road, roadway connection on Giddens 
We are just asking for flexibility by the modified TS3 to allow a rural section versus an urban section, a modified section that assists us on the stormwater. We agree to construct that road. Okay, so everybody's on the same page here, right? Staff, the applicant, yes. everybody's yes, on the same page. Okay, so when I made my motion, it was to accept the conditions as proposed by the applicant, which is he is in agreement with staff and those are the conditions we are actually accepting right okay. now. That's what I want. Yeah. That's correct. Is that Commissioner. correct? Everybody's yes, correct on yes, that? Okay, just want to make sure. Commissioner Overman, you recognize. Um, that, that answered my question. I wanted to get some clarification and possibly offer a substitute to, for, to what she just suggested. So I, I'm good where uh, it sounds like staff and the applicant have come to some agreement in providing a compromise to be able to create some level of access. The question still is whether or not it's a TS3 type of road but there, there will be some road uh, put into place in order to create access to Broadway. And with that, I, I, that's why I wanted to offer the, the clarification as well as the second. So I'll stop there. Okay, we have, an emotion, we have a motion on the floor. Seeing no further discussion on the motion, please call the roll. Miller? No. Hagan? No. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried five to two. Commissioners Miller and Hagen voted no. Mr. Gorman, is any further business to come before us today on land use? Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. I do have one other item, a uh, uh, housekeeping item. Uh, this, this relates to some uh, three pending comp plan amendments that the board has that have associated rezonings with them. Um, these hearings uh, are not scheduled to come at the same time to the board, and we'd like the board's authority to schedule both the comp plan amendments and the zoning amendments together as part of the November 10th land use meeting. And these amendments are CPA 20-01, 20-02, and 19-06. Uh, we, we do not uh, anticipate and co coordinated with um, Melissa Zornita with the Planning Commission, do not anticipate needing to have those as evening public hearings and for logistical purposes, request the board's authorization to hold those as part of the November 10th land use meeting. Move Mr. Wormley's recommendation. Is it Mr. Second. Mr. White, second by, who was that? Merman. Second by Commissioner Merman. Any discussion? Commissioner Smith, you recognize. What are those uh, comp plan amendments, um, briefly, that uh, we would be agreeing to hold in the daytime rather than the usual evening times? Yes, Commissioner, I believe one of them is on um, uh, State Road 92. It's a small existing uh, youth. I believe the other two um, are, are small scale amendments. If, if you give me a moment, I can pull up. Mr. Gormley, I can, I can assist uh, you with that. Uh, Tony Garcia, Planning Commission staff. Uh, the other two, the other two amendments are also small scale amendments. Uh, one is uh, the 2001, which is located in the uh, Lake Denota Sassa area. That's a request to go to light industrial. And then there's another one on County Line Road on the eastern part. Also a small scale amendment requesting to go to, I believe, light industrial. That's also a small scale amendment. I, I don't understand why we would change the process, which has uh, always been evening used to allow citizen participation. Why are we asking to change the process for just these three rather than um, uh, go along with the typical process? The commissioner, the request is, is due to the related zoning applications. The re related ap zoning applications would typically be heard in the day and we felt that the substance of those applications um, being their small scale would be addressed it, thoroughly through the zoning application um you know if, if the board is more comfortable holding these as as in this, a separate evening hearing uh, we could move the zoning to that but we thought that that um 
in the interest of time, it was we we would not lose any um, significant interested parties in in either of these uh, opportunity to participate if we held them as part of the land use meeting. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. See no further discussion. Please call the roll. Miller. Yes. Hagan. Yes. Kemp. Yes. Merman? Yes. Overman? Yes. Smith? No. White? Yes. Motion carried six to one. Commissioner Smith voted no. Mr. Gormley. They the agenda. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. That adjourns the land use meeting. We're now moving to the uh, Board of County Commissioners workshop. Um, Mr. Garcia. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Commissioners. Good morning, Tony Garcia, Planning Commission staff. We have two items uh, to make a brief. We have a brief presentation on two items that are part of our July cycle. Uh, these items will be going before the Planning Commission at their regular hearing on October 12th and are tentatively scheduled to go before this body for um, transmittal consideration as each one of them exceeds 10 acres on October 22nd. So that will be a transmittal hearing that will be coming back to this body. Uh, on that date. Uh, without any further ado, I'm going to let um, Mr. Will Augustine uh, make his presentation on the first one, which is HCCPA 20-15. Mr. Augustine, you recognize. Good morning, Commissioners. Will Augustine, Planning Commission staff. One moment, please. I assume you can see my PowerPoint presentation? No, sir, we can't see it. Oh. Mr. Augustine, this is Mr. Brewer. Would you like me to share it on your behalf, sir? All right, let's go ahead and do that, please. Just to confirm, this is dash 15? That's correct. You are up. Good afternoon, Commissioner, excuse me. Good morning, Commissioners. Will Augustine, Planning Commission staff. The first item before you is Hillsborough County Comprehensive Plan Amendment. 20-15, next slide please. This amendment is located in North Central Hillsborough County along Mango Road, just north of Martin Luther King Boulevard. It's located in the urban service area. Next slide please. The subject site is a privately initiated map amendment in North, North Central Hillsborough County, which is approximately 19.5 acres in size. The aerial shows that the surrounding area is predominantly single family homes. The land use of residential four, residential six, and residential nine predominate the area. Subject property is north of Mango Road, which is also County Road 579 and the Martin Luther King Boulevard intersection. U.S. Highway 92 and Interstate 4 are to the north, Interstate 75 is to the west, and Taylor Road is to the east. Next slide, please. The subject site has an adopted public, quasi-public land use classification. A large public, quasi-public parcel immediately to the south is Mango Elementary School. The areas along Mango Road include public, quasi-public, park and recreational, and residential uses. The areas along Martin Luther King Boulevard are a mixture of office, commercial, and residential uses. Residential 4, Residential 6, and Residential 9 are the predominant land uses of the surrounding properties. Next slide, please. The applicant is requesting a residential nine land use change. Next slide, please. The currently adopted land use classification of 
public, quasi-public, doesn't allow dwelling units on a 19.5 acre site. With the land use change to residential nine, the subject side would have a potential build out of up to 175 dwelling units. Suburban scale neighborhood commercial, office, or multi-purpose projects are limited to a build out of 175,000 square feet or floor area ratio of 0 0.50. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, I see no questions uh, at this time. Uh, Mr. Garcia. Excuse me, I have a question. Mr. Smith, you recognize. Thank you, so that, that land was public because it was part of the school? No, ma'am, it is um, currently uh, being used as St. Francis CC Catholic Church. There's a church there, and then there is a um, uh, rectory building, which is uh, apart from it. And the applicant is the church then selling the land? No, ma'am. So what they would like to do is build uh, senior um, uh, oh. dwelling, uh, dwelling units uh, for parishioners. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Uh, Mr. Smith, Mr. Garcia, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the final item uh, for your consideration at this morning's briefing is HCCPA 20-16 by Ms. Krista Kelly. Thank you. Ms. Kelly, you recognize. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Krista Kelly, Planning Commission staff. I'm presenting uh, Comprehensive Plan Amendment 2016. Uh, I, I direct you to the aerial on the title page. Uh, the site initially, uh, when applied for, came in as two parcels, totaling 221.6 acres. Um, since that time and post the delivery of your packet, the applicant has requested uh, the deletion of the lower portion of the site, which is approximately 30 acres. Um, so it's the upper northern portion of the site. Okay. I'm sorry, it's not moving. <laughs> Ms. Kelly, if you take your mouse to the bottom left corner, there's the arrows. Thank you. Um, this is a, a location map showing CPA 2016, uh, just east of Tampa. It's in the rural service area and it's also within the boundary of the East Orient Park Community Plan. Um, again, it is east of Tampa and it's southeast of Temple Terrace. Um, it's approximately a third of a mile north of I-4 and is bounded to the east by I-75 and to the west by the Tampa Executive Airport. Um, this aerial shows the site and uh, you can see the airport to the west and I-75 and I-4. Uh, again, the site was modified from the 221 acres to now 191 acres, the 30 acres being removed, and also a portion of the larger parcel that extends across I-75 was not included in the application, and it's not shown on this uh, depiction. It's not delineated, but I wanted to point that out. Um, EPC pointed out that there, and the applicant pointed out that there is wetlands on that northern parcel. Um, the assessment has not been completed at this time and approximation is uh, somewhere between 50 and 70 acres of wetlands. Currently the site uh, is agricultural um, and it is surrounded by a rural community to the south. Um, and to the east, and then you can see the intensity increasing towards the airport, and then in as it reaches Tampa, much more intense. 
Currently, the site's um, designated residential one, as is the surrounding area to the south and east. The airport and those accessory facilities that support the airport and warehousing to the west are designated public, quasi-public. South of I-4, there the area is predominantly designated community mixed use 12. The applicant's requesting a change to light industrial planned. Uh, the impact of this change, currently 191 units uh, would be allowable and up to 30,000 square feet or 0.25 FAR. Um, LIP eliminates residential use of the property and allows an FAR of 0.75, which would equate to approximately 6.2 million square feet of non-residential uses. Um, however, in staff's brief and uh, cursory assessment, um, the typical build-out of LIP is somewhere in the realm of 8% of the site, and that greatly reduces uh, the potential industrial development. Uh, again, this is a uh, speculation, but typically it might build out to uh, 915 plus or minus thousand square feet. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Um, I see uh, Mr. Oldman, you recognize. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate it. And thank you for your presentation. Um, quick question. So if I understood you correctly, the portion to the left side of the project between the airport and the blue, you know, portion of the portfolio, that to the to the left of it or, or to the west of it, that's actually zone residential one all the way up to the airstrip? Uh, this the light uh, yellow is residential one. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. But the, the the remaining portion of the yellow to the west of that, that's not part of this particular project. Is that residential one as well? Um, the, the, it is designated residential one, that little cutout. Seriously? Okay. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, how does that happen? How do, we, how do we put an airstrip on the residential one zoning land? Um, but that bit question is, so they cut out the south, the southern portion of that, that little L down there, correct? Is that what you suggested? Uh, that, that is a good question, and um, that is something that I can investigate and request um, an explanation from the airport. Um, I believe that is under their ownership. I don't know if uh, Mr. Garcia might want to weigh in on this. Uh, to my knowledge, it is part of the, the Air Tampa Executive Airport. Uh, okay. no, I, can, I can answer both of those questions for you, uh, Commissioner Oberman, very quickly, if, if I may. Tony Garcia, okay. Commission staff. So the parcel to the left, which is not part of the plan amendment, is indeed owned by, that's correct, is owned by the uh, owned by the Aviation Authority. As to why it's residential one, we're still conducting some research on that. We have had preliminary conversations in the pre-application conference with the uh, with the uh, applicant regarding this, but of course that's not within their purview. So we're con continuing to conduct research as to why this property was not correctly redesignated public quasi-public. So we're in that process so that you know that. And uh, yes, you are correct that the L piece on the southern part of the original subject site is the parcel, yes, is the parcel that uh, has been uh, requested to be removed from consideration for the plan amendment request. Okay, so in line of that, thank you. Um, so the this portion to the south is going to remain residential one, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, and then access to this the, the rezoned uh, light industrial uh, planned would be from the uh, on the southern border from access through Eureka Springs Road and then take a right on whatever that is to, to access it or are there other access points to that particular property because obviously 270 or 75 is not one. Yeah, there is um, Falkenberg Road here accesses okay. the larger parcel. Okay. Right here. 
Although it is, it is a small, um, a two-lane road, it, it How about to into the, the west? Is there more access to the west, even though they're carving out that one piece? Will there be a, a secondary or, or other access points? There is an airport road that is part of the airport project or the airport facility, um, but they don't designate that as access to the site. And it's a little bit premature uh, as there is no site plan to determine what the access points are, but uh, they are limited at this time. Okay, I'm just I'm curious because obviously 75s to, and the airports to, to the north and the west, there's not much other than the south available to access an industrial spot. And everything to the south of it appears to be residential one or at least zoned that way. Um, uh, is that accurate? Yes, yes, that is accurate. Okay. All right. And do we have any, any understanding of what the, the intent is for this particular project? There is a, I do believe that there is a PD. There is a PD that has been submitted, a companion PD that has been submitted for this site. Uh, of course, in the plan amendment review process, that's not for anything for us to take into consideration. Uh, I do believe that it is for some, there's a track that's supposed to be for vehicular use to the north of the site. And then there will be some, uh, uh, there are, are a couple of other ancillary uses that are proposed along with the site, which include garages and which also include some kind of target center. Uh, those are getting into the nuances of the rezoning that uh, we are not really, um, it's not really appropriate to bring that forward at this juncture, but there is a uh, um, uh, uh, commissioner APD that is uh, that has been submitted for the site. Okay, great. That answers my questions. I, I was just curious about the access to an industrial site through a residential zoned area, and that was that was the purpose of my question. Thank you very much, Commissioner Smith. You recognize. Thank you. What are the utilities there? The water and sewer outside the urban service area. I understand that the airport is served by um, uh, the city of Tampa utilities. Um, I don't think the site has access to potable water. Again, um, as Tony pointed out, we're in the process of assessing all of this information and getting comments back from the agencies. And I don't have that at this point to confirm one way or another, but I will get that to you. Uh, I would also, here, what, what was that? If I, if I may add on, uh, Commissioner Smith, uh, we're in the process of getting comments back from the reviewing agencies, which have not been concluded yet. Sometimes that happens in the timing aspect. So regarding your question, that, that information, to the degree of specificity that we would require from a compliant aspect, we haven't received that yet. And as I, I have also stated, uh, development services does have a, a PD that has been submitted also for development review, which is gonna be at a greater degree and will answer the questions that you're, uh, you're asking about. Now, uh, once we get this information, as it becomes available to us, we can most certainly provide it to all the commissioners contemporaneously uh, regarding issues regard, uh, uh, along that line. As far as what Ms. Kelly has stated, potable water is not available because it is in the rural service area. The, the Tampa Executive Airport does have access with the Tampa service area to the west, and I believe that the applicant is in negotiations or talks to try and access that as well. And that is about as far as I know regarding this particular uh, potential use of uh, those types of facilities. Again, we'll know to a greater degree once the rezoning comes in again in, on that particular uh, portion of the uh, of the uh, land use change process instead of a two fold process. Well, here's here's something you won't hear me say very often is <laughs> uh, um, it seems like this might be a place to consider expanding the urban service area boundary. That's all I'll offer for the comp plan. Thank you. Okay. I see no further hands at this time. Anything further to come before us, Mr. Garcia? No, sir, that concludes our presentations. With that, we'll adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.
Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Have a good afternoon.